There we go. Now you should be able to hear me. Now you should be able to hear me. Let's have a quick look over here. It's because I had it on mute. <laughs> Let's double check. Should be coming there through now. Yeah, brilliant. Now you should be able to hear me. Right. Now you be able to hear me. So I made that mistake beforehand on my Amir Khan versus Billy Dib. It's I had it on mute. <laughs> Let's oh, check. one sec. That's coming through again on a different one. Yeah, so I had myself on mute before on the Khan versus Div stream. Problem is, I didn't have friends like you in the chat, Toby, um, telling me for like for forty-five minutes I was talking but muted. Um, so that was a real waste of time. That was, but yeah, um, good on you, Toby and Rosina. Shout out to Toby and Rosina to for listening to my dulcet tones whilst you're obviously probably enjoying your late night late night friday night so yeah just before i started the stream right i was getting myself sorted and then this thing broke on me this is where like i put my tripod i put my this is the tripod obviously i put my phone on there and i went to obviously finagle it so it's like so i could see it and it just broke me so i've got like this makeshift thing now that i'm just looking down at to watch the fight on but anyway nevertheless you guys are here i'm here it's good to have you in here let's have a quick look at who's in uh tommy temper it's it seems to be perennially first in here. Tommy Tempo, great to have you in here. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Shannon Briggs style. Uh, Toby said attempt. Toby, I mean, Toby's my good friend. Good to have you in. Obviously, you're in with Rosina as well. And Coco. Don't forget Coco. So, uh, um, hopefully, Coco will be watching and not uh, messing, you, <laughs> messing you guys around. And Rival Boxing Talking News. Good work, Ames. Good to have you in here. Uh, like watching the Rivals when I can. Um, always providing good content. Houston, we have a problem to Tommy Temper. Yeah, well, I didn't need to tap into to Houston home base um, this time around, but yeah, I just got it unmuted. So yeah, Thank, thankfully you guys are in here to tell me that. So it was a bit, bit of a dome moment. What's happening, bro? Last King of Scotland, always in the live streams. Good to have you here. Last King of Scotland, got something to tell you as well, actually. You know how you said to me on one of my videos, you commented... Peter Manfredo Sr. being in the contender years back. Um, I looked into it, right? And as a result of your comment, I have now scripted another video because I stumbled across something completely crazy. Like, I hadn't seen it before. I'm not going to let into it just yet because the script is written for my next video. It'll be out uh, this coming week. But I found I, I came across something absolutely crazy it's meme filled, it's hilarious, it's ridiculous, it's to do with boxing. Can't wait to pull it out there. It's gonna be a short video, but it's a really good one as well. Can't wait for it. But yeah, like um I did some research because of your comment and it led me to something really, really strange. So thank you very much for that comment. Um asking of Scotland. Good to have you in here as always. Tommy Temper, I'm not on StreamYard yet. Um I'm look like I had uh, Steve come in on through Skype through OBS. I'm looking to in the future do these live streams and then bring callers on, have them on for like five minutes and bring on the next one. Uh, I just haven't trialed that yet. So once, once I've trialed that at home, done it privately, and then I can apply it, I'll then be doing things like bringing you guys on and bringing the next guy on, whoever wants to call in kind of thing. Um, but just as of yet, I've, I've, I'm not using stream yet. I haven't trialed that, but soon I will have that up hopefully. And then we can get on with that sort of thing as well. Last thing is Scotland. How good is Tete? Never seen him. Okay, last king of Scotland, the one thing, the one thing you need to see of Ebenezer Tete to tell you everything about um, Tete is, you. I think you need to type into Google, uh, or sorry, YouTube, like Ebenezer Tete spin. He's in like um, a Ghanaian school gym or gym or something of that matter. He's up against an opponent, opponent where he's dominating him to the point where he... He feels he can spin around in a circle and then like throw a punch. Um, I don't want to go as far as comical, but it's, I think, Gorman on the face of it. I don't want to, you know, be overlooking anyone. Obviously, Andrew Ruiz told us not to look anyone in the heavyweight division. Punches, chance and all that. Uh, but Tete, he should, I think it's a little bit of a step down from Gorman. So Te um, Dubois should be able to come through against him it, it, i mean the guy's um the guy's the cousin the guy's the cousin of latte apparently i like i don't i don't know this i have no idea i haven't looked into the lineage and obviously there's information's not out there but 
from his own words, I think I saw from an interview, I can't remember where it was, he said he's the cousin of Richard Latte. So forget about every belt for Daniel Dubois, hashtag every belt, which is what BT Sport are promoting at the moment. It's hashtag every family member that uh, Daniel Dubois is going through at the moment. He's gone through Richard Latte. Richard Latte's probably asked, hey, do you mind throwing a bag to my cousin? And he's come over from Ghana, has Ebenezer Tete, to avenge, was it revenge or avenge or revenge the loss or defeat from that his brother took at the hands of Daniel Dubois. So um, Tete... Yeah, I've not seen much of him. I've just seen a couple of clips that I saw him fighting in kind of, you know, these these gyms and such and the opponents being not that much either. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's an, it's another one for Daniel Dubois to look really good in, look explosive in, and I hope he does. Uh, got a lot of um, stock in Daniel Dubois. I want to see him do well. But um, let's 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 move on to some of the fights on the undercard whilst we're um, whilst we're here. Obviously looking looking forward to Daniel Dubois. So we've got Daniel Dubois versus Ebenezer Tete. That's obviously the main event. You've got what's going to be a really good fight, I think, uh, the chief support, which is Archie Sharp versus Declan Garrity. And then you have just below that, I think it should be next. Uh, I think it's a little bit late. Um, so it should be next because I think they've had a couple of floats. Or they might have not had the floats, but um, they've had a couple of fights anyway underneath it. Um, Nicola Adams versus Maria Celina. So let's, let's talk about that for the moment. Uh, you said that you've. I smoked that much weed, bro. I couldn't remember. <laughs> That's fine. It's not a problem. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there isn't that much to know about Tete anyway. But uh, we'll get onto Tete in a moment. Just have a quick look at uh, what my friend's saying. Yeah, so Nicola Adams. Nicola Adams is like, obviously, she's a bit of a. You know, maybe the word's a, bit, a little bit strong, but I think so. A pioneer. Like, one of the first names for, like, women's British boxing like here and you might think I'm putting a bit of like quite a big stock into that but Steve Bunce was saying it as well on the BT Sport pre-fight build-up that I saw around like 7.30 like this is a big fight for women's boxing in this country and that's because she was obviously an Olympian winning winning gold and she was all over the TV here she still is on TV you can see her on like on adverts I think it's like a skincare advert or something like that like I like Nicola Adams I quite like her a lot I want to see her do well, but this could be trickier than it may seem. Like I don't know much about her opponent. Obviously, we don't know much about Tete either. But with Nicola Adams' opponent, from what I have seen, there's a little bit more on her. She's had 30-plus professional fights. And Nicola Adams has had, like, what, six? And also, Salinas, her opponent, has fought, I believe, twice already this year. Yeah, sorry, just reading the comments. Yeah, um, she's fought already twice this year. Um, so she's a lot more active, whereas Adams is coming off of a year-long layoff, which isn't going to help coming into this one. Um, I believe Nicola Adams will come through this. I want her to come through this. Uh, I don't think, because Bunce was saying she's fighting for her career, I think that's a little bit too much of a superlative I think it's too strong. Like, I want her to kick on with her career. And I think she will, hopefully. And if she does lose, like, I wouldn't write her off. Um, but, yeah, like, year-longs... I want to see less of the year-long delays. I want to see a kick on in the future. You know, having more fights would be a good step. Um, you know, like, take a look at Katie Taylor kind of riding this wave of women's boxing, which is getting the spotlight at the moment. And Nicholas should be getting that spotlight. She should have had that spotlight. She should have been one of the first after the Olympics to have gone on and kicked on, but it's been Katie Taylor who has, has been kind of been riding that wave, uh, but she's got the talent for it. So yeah, let's see more of Nicola, but this could be a tricky test uh, for her. And for, like, hopefully it won't turn up to be like kind of the potential, you know, banana skin as it were, but yeah, like um, she's got to be on it. If she wants it, if the will's there, if the losses, if the, Layoffs from out of the ring or outside stuff or not want it, her head being in boxing, then, you know, I don't know that. That's me just being, that's just conjecture from myself. But, like, hopefully it's in her in her head. So, to, let's hopefully see, make sure, let's hopefully see Nicola Adams come through this test. Let's have a look in the chat again. Ross says it's WA. What's WA? I have no idea what WA. I'm, I'm not into my, uh, Facial creams, as it were. 
and rival on Boxing Talk and News, so it's Nivea. It might be Nivea. It was an E45 advert that she did. E45, my B. <laughs> uh, whatever your B is, I'm rivaled. Uh, E45 isn't mine, but yeah. What's Tete's record and chances like from G Lung? Gonna pull up box rec. Don't know too much about Tete. I had a little bit of a look, but let's have a quick look at his box rec. I was looking for a photo for him, and the box rec photo is <laughs> unusable. The guy looks like um an like a 3D animated character of himself in the box rec kind of uh, picture that they have. Normally there are some good ones, but this one's uh, straight out of the terrible game CGI kind of look. So it's 19 and 0 with 16 knockouts against. I'm not a boxing historian, but I think boxing historians would probably struggle to <laughs> struggle to kind of know many of these names. Jones Kurashi, Ibrahim Marshall, John Dugu, Kwesi Tutu. I know none of them. These old fights have come at the seconds out boxing gym in Accra, Ghana. Some some in Unity Park. Or basically he's a home fighter in Ghana, isn't he? And he's coming over now. Probably on the uh Say so from Richard Latte, throwing it, helping him get a bag against Daniel Dubois. But yeah, like I mean, there's very little known about him, but there's nothing to. But that fight with Richard Latte, it turned out to be a bit of a firefight, and it was a good fight. So if um, Ebenezer Tete brings some of that, half of that, all of that, then we're in for a good fight as well. And he caught him, Latte caught him with a with a shot. Uh, Dubois took it well. It's good to see that he can take a shot at this point in his career. I'm glad that question's kind of been answered because it was a good shot. It was a hook because um, they were trading hooks, weren't they? So if um, Tete's looking to bring the same, you know, anything can happen in sport boxing and that's the chance that I give Tete. I can only give him that chance because I know that much about him, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, let me, let, me know, let me know what you guys think because... <laughs> If anybody here is going for Tete to win, put it on there now. Let me know what you're saying because either you have that magic eight ball or or you know something that I don't. You're, you, or you're from Ghana and you've been watching Tete throughout his whole career and you've got some stock in him or something. But yeah, I think most people would soundly say Dubois should come through this and beat, beat uh, Ebenezer Tete by a knockout. I'm just going to take a quick sip of my... Uh, my tea my tea's keeping warm I'm in the garage and you, you guys know that this British weather has been pouring down with rain windy the garage is just that slight bit kind of well it's not the most foolproof of doors is it so it comes through Let's pop into the chat. So yeah, Jilin, that's uh, Tete's record and chances like. And Rivan Boxing Talking News, 19 and 0, 16 KOs. Chances are slim to none. And last King of Scotland, better off with Ebenezer Scrooge. He would keep it tight for a bit. Uh, with the pun, Christmas pun coming in uh, coming in a little bit early, but it's not too far off, eh? Ebenezer Scrooge, title, title bastard. Um, yeah, man. Strange name, different name, but Latte was a strange name and different name as well. So, who knows? They eh? could could make for a great fight. Also, could make for a terrible fight. But, but yeah, Archie Sharp. Let's move on to him whilst we're waiting for the Nicola Adams uh, fight to come on. Archie Sharp for me is one to watch. Let me just get through, get up my. Um... Here we go. So Archie Sharp versus Declan Garrity. It's the chief support, uh, and it features a fight that. For me, it's caught the eye, and caught the eye of many. 16-0, um, Archie Sharp, who he surely one to watch in the super featherweight division. He combines flair with quality shots, shots to the body, and he has a fan-friendly style. He's making the second defense of his WBO European super featherweight title, which he won by beating Leon Woodstock Jr. and defended against Jordan McCrory. That fight against Liam Woodstock was a good one. Liam Woodstock was coming forward. He got dropped a couple of times, but Archie Sharp put an accomplished performance and then as well against Jordan McCrory. Jordan McCrory was a really good fight. Um, the body shots that he was just 
landing on McCrory, the shots that you could see, obviously, to the body. He was picking them head, body, head, finishing to the body as well. It was proper sweet. Really liked the look of him. And it was that bite in which he kind of caught my eye and I thought, wow, there's something there in him because he's got that bit of flair. He's got the punch selection. And defence is, uh, you know, obviously I'm no boxing expert, but defence for my eye on the eye test, he probably needs to work on. But he kind of works on that flair, kind of being able to move out of range and things of the punches and relies on that kind of the reflexes. And Declan Garrity, his opponent, judging by his pre-fight press, conf- uh, pre-fight press conference comments, he's not come here to lose, has he? Uh, and the fight, this fight is the ability to be the fight of the night, in my opinion. Salinas is just making her way to the ring, so we're very shortly coming into this uh, fight, Nicola Adams versus Salinas. I will just read a little bit more about Archie Sharp whilst we're waiting. Five foot nine orthodox super featherweight. He's related to, I think he's the cousin of Jack Fincham. Now, I've never watched Love Island, of course, but some of you may have. Um, and yeah, like I've been saying, he's got the kind of slight, he can pot shot, he can shoot sharp. He's a sharp shooter, as he says. Combinations of head to body, can pot shot as well. Loves a body shot. And uh, on that bit of flair that he has, he's got that flair, but he's not obnoxious or over the top or not like kind of unwarranted. When he puts, when he has those kind of flare moments, when he will rest on the ropes and things like, he knows when to do it and when to stop doing it. At least so far from what I've seen of him, uh, he's got to be careful not to kind of overdo it. But I mean, the guy's confident in himself, and he, and he should be. Eight national finals, winning six of them to make him, you know, the six-time national champion. Then he became like three times Tri Nation gold medalist. He won gold medal at Ireland and um, also travelled to Russia for the Europeans and got himself a silver medal uh, and he says his dream himself was to become Olympic champion but obviously it didn't work out for him in the senior ABAs just going to take another quick sip of my um, my tea one, one second Selena's coming out to the final countdown we didn't quite get to that final countdown roaring moment unfortunately but yeah, he's he's on the Archie Sharp is on the cusp of something really big. I mean, this is what he said with the in a recent interview with the Metro, which I was reading. He says he's just looking forward to putting on a big show for everyone. That's tonight, a big show against Declan Garrity. He wants to push on for a world title shot next year after this, and he's calling out Jamal Herring, uh, the reigning WBA world champion. Um, Jamal Herring and him like had been mentioning Archie Sharp. I think he'd mentioned that he would uh, take a voluntary defense against um sorry nick adams is just coming out let's check her out the lioness yeah so um yeah jamal herring had said that he'd take a voluntary defense against um archie sharp and archie sharp wants that fight and you know obviously frank warren he's got that kind of friendly relationship with the wbo um, so it's very, very possible that Sharp's next fight will be for the WBO belt, which is big, going against the fighting Marine who beat Masayuki Ito for the title. I've only seen bits of that fight. Um, but yeah, possibly a one-two defense gives him that earlier opportunity unless he gets mandated. But he's also eyeing people like Javante Davis and Tevin Farmer. Uh, and I think that Tar- uh, Tevin Farmer, Archie Sharp fight is a good one. Uh, whether it can be made is another thing, but it's a great fight nonetheless. And he's, he's like, Nick Adams is just coming to the ring. She's coming out to Nicki Minaj song. Nicki Minaj song sorry, sorry. Um, so yeah, if you if you've not got this on now, um, Nick Adams is just coming on. So this fight should be coming on now. Let me know what you think. If you think Nick Adams is going to win, if you think she's going to get that shock upset, uh, draw, who knows? Um, or just what you think in general of Nick Adams, who obviously won this. She won the belt outside of the ring didn't she she hasn't won this in the ring um obviously that's not a way a fighter wants to win the belt um she's putting up for defense so maybe this will feel like her you know winning the belt as such and being a proper champion but i mean she's got she's got the belt you know whatever you've got the belt this is your chance to defend it and she's picked Selena. i think this was supposed to be originally a unification fight but the unification fight fell through um, so they've got someone else in and maybe it'll be a unification fight next. I think I'm right in saying that. Um, I think it's just the WBO. Yeah, it's just the WBO belt that's uh, on the line here. But anyway, uh, Archie Sharp, he's thought of everything. Like, 
who's got a mine coach. I don't know how many of these boxers have mine coaches. I remember the idea of like, uh, was it Carl Froch having like a sports psychotherapist or whatever it is, psychologist, um, you know, breed for the <laughs> George Groves Carl Froch rematch way back in the day. Well, it's not that far ago, but anyway. Um, and he credits him in helping him overcome a battle. Oh, let's just double check. Yeah, coming back with a battle of depression, changing his mindset and helping to look at positives. So, I mean, if it helps him, that's that's great. You know what I mean? Uh, bring that person in. Uh, he's got a few members of his team. And obviously then two years ago, linked up with Frank Warren. And it's been up and up and up since since that. Obviously for um, Jordan McCrory and Liam Wonstock. And that's going to be next after this fight. Nicola Adams and Maria Salinas. They're just doing the Taylor Tate kind of thing. Salinas is 30. Adams is 36. I didn't even, like, I, I must have forgot that she's 36. And, yeah, she, it's coming up to, you know, the twilight of the career for some some fighters. Uh, so it's very, um, is it make or break? Don't know. You can never really tell. Fighters, uh, like, you know, Carl Froch had a... Uh, his career kicked on kind of later on to the latter ends of his career kind of thing. I had that, obviously, kind of the match with George Groves as such. But, I mean, you know, maybe it is maybe it is time for Nicola Adams and this this will be the fight. This will be the fight for her to to kick on from. So, let's focus on that. I'll put the article shop stuff for her to a side and I'll read your comments in a moment. But it's about to happen. It's moments away. They're just given the official introductions. They'll get their uh, referee instructions as well in a moment. And uh, this fight, this fight is for the WBO World Flyweight Championship. Women's, obviously, World Flyweight Championship. Let's see what you guys are saying. Aim's careful of background noise. Yeah, I've just lowered it down. I think, obviously, the Nicki Minaj song came through. So um, I've just lowered that down now. GB Boxing. GB Boxing, good to have you here. I haven't seen you in the chat before. If you're new here, please smash the like button and subscribe. It helps me out such a great deal. Um, good to have you guys on board. But GB Boxing, if you've subscribed, great to, great to have you here. If you haven't, please do subscribe as well. Uh, and Rival maybe come here. All right. Uh, Rival, thank you for bringing on a few uh, few people with you. Uh, good to have you in here, GB Boxing. AA Boxing and Blunts, Evening Gents, AA. Good to have you here as well. AA has been around for quite a while. I've seen him obviously in the... Um, or we used to see them. They're not on YouTube at the moment. They're working back on there, but on uh, the Boxing Asylum in the chat as well. Leo Reaper, bet it's a milky tea. Leo Reaper, Jack, as it were. It's If you can see this, it's a green tea. I don't make uh, milky teas. I don't really go for um, tea chat. What is this about? We're, we're here for boxing, not tea chat. But yeah, um, green tea is for me at the moment. Vegan on extreme. Another one of my mates, Nathan. What you're saying, lad? Another interview soon. Working on it. A couple of things in the pipeline. Um, really enjoyed interviewing Jonathan Reed from The Contender. It was a blast. Um, had to, it was quite it's quite tedious, actually, inter um, editing interviews and such. But, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I really enjoyed interviewing him. He was really fun to interview. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't put like the video because I'd recorded it as well, but it was just a bit choppy and it was my first time doing it, so there's a couple of mistakes made. But um, but yeah, interviews hopefully will come up, and there's another one coming up soon. Uh, a couple of things in the pipeline. Don't want to announce just yet, but uh, once it comes through to fruition, something would have worked out for uh, you know another time. But yeah, once it does come through, I'll put it out on the channel. And I can't wait for it. But yeah, we've kicked off. Good right hand there from Nicola Adams coming up to the. Um, the bell for the first round. Just a uh, right right hand from Nick Adams caught caught the eye for me there whilst I was talking. She's on the front foot. She's back in Selena's up. Selena's, Selena's is a lot smaller, and Nick Adams looks like the bigger fighter, wider, bigger. Good right hand again there. Good start there from Nick Adams. Didn't see most of the round to be fair, but um, but yeah, it was it looked like a good start from Nicola. Toby's third attempt, Tay Kames, T base, second channel confirmed. I can't like we've got a builder in at the moment who um he doesn't drink he doesn't eat, he doesn't drink, he just has tea. He literally just has tea and he has his tea. Like fine, you've got me talking tea. He will have his tea. 
Obviously, you've got the water, tea bag, no sugars, and then the lit tiniest bit of tea, a tiniest bit of milk. So it's a very dark kind of brown color. Um, analyzing teas here. So if that's how you have your tea, if that's the correct way to have your tea, then fair play to you. But that's how the uh, builder, the painter, decorator, wherever it is, uh, has this tea. You got me talking tea. Green tea for me. As we come into the second round, I'm just going to take a quick sip of this. Second round's kicked in. Nick Adams takes in the center of the ring. Just jabbing, trying to jab and find a range, find a distance against Selena. Selena isn't doing too much, she didn't throw him back. Steps in with a one, two. Both these shots kind of misses, they both kind of smother each other's work there. Selena's taking the outside of the ring as Nick Adams is kind of coming off like the amateur sort of style at the moment. They're both backed up towards the rings of Nick Adams. Nick Adams clinches. Selena shoots the right hand, which is blocked, and then Nick Adams gets in some good work on the inside. A couple more jabs as Nick Adams takes the center of the ring. Good body work there from Nicola. Steps in with a right hand, then gets to the left hook as she angles off. And she's, she's doing well here against uh, Selena. She's kind of showing... It's only two rounds in, it's very early, but maybe levels is the operative word at the moment. She's putting in some classy work, some good work. Nothing's landing too clean at the moment or too kind of devastating, but it's good. It's good here for Nicola. Just got caught a little bit there. Caught a little bit square. She kind of moves over to the right. She's shifting over to the right. Now she's sift back to left, pouring out that jab. Shifts off the left again, does a check hook as Selena steps in, then clinches. Selena's in the clinch, gets off some body workers so they eventually stop fighting and they're broken off. Blocks her uh, right hook as Selena steps in. And the bell for second round rings. Good. Again, good work. Uh, Selena isn't um, you know, deterred by this. She's still coming forward when she can. Um... Nothing's really stopping anything at the moment from Nicola Adams, but she's doing good work. Tea stream. It's not a tea stream. <laughs> team stream. If you know what team stream is, but this is not a team stream uh, on this occasion. I'm Brian Boxing Talking News. Chamomile myself. I've never had chamomile. Never ever had chamomile with honey. I've heard, of, obviously I know a lot of people will have chamomile with honey, but I've never had it. It's a smell. I've, I smelled it before and I just thought like, it just doesn't smell like it would taste good. And hemp tea from vegan non-extreme. Well, the vegan non-extreme would have hemp tea, wouldn't they? Um, I've not had hemp tea either. So maybe next time you're down, vegan non-extreme, you can uh, you can give me some hemp tea. Even though you said you were supposed to be down a couple of weeks back. But uh, next time you're down, we'll have some hemp tea. Bell for the third round rings. Selenius takes the centre ring, trying to back... Adams onto the ropes. A right hook lands from Adams on Salinas, but not clean. Good shot. Another check right hook, but it's it's all kind of like soft. It's all a little bit soft. It's not a lot of power at the moment. Um, and they're landing a little bit like this. It looks like just a couple of them. I can't say for all of them, but a couple of the shots seen, they kind of like slap on the... On the on the palm sort of thing when it comes through as opposed to landing on the knuckles. I might have just seen the angle wrong, but that's just what it looked like on that first viewing there. Um, again, I'm no boxing expert, but you know, obviously you've got to aim with the knuckles and stuff. So a couple of them seem like they're slapping or cuffing. Good work there on the inside from both of them. Another right hook, another left hook it was, sorry. But she's pouring the jab well. She's moving around the outside. Selena's looking to come forward. They're engaging a lot more. Nick Adams isn't afraid to engage as well, which is good. I think if Selena's had a lot more power, or if she catches her, this could get interesting. But for the, this is a better round, definitely, for Selena's. And turning it into a dog fight. A little, maybe if she becomes a little mini like female Sean Porter and proper dogs it up, that'd be cool. Um, 
But she's leading in and she's, get, she's obviously bridging that gap and getting in closer. Adams will do well here to clinch and kind of negate that so then she can get back to boxing. A good shot, an uppercut on the inside as Salinas came forward. That's good. That's a good, uh, good way to stop that. A couple of double jabs. She double jabs off the back foot as well to try and put off Salinas, does Adams. Couple of shots in the inside. That's a, a shot. Where, that is really poor because both the referee well yelled to break, and they just kept going. Both of them kind of ignored the instruction from the ref, and then Salinas got in a quite a big shot there on um, that knocked Adams' head back. Pretty poor there. Pretty poor sports well, sports womanship from from the both of them. Third round. That was I think it was the third round, and Salinas did a lot better actually. Salinas was uh, did um. Did a lot better than her last two rounds. Dominic Engel, of course, in the in the um, in the corner. But it's weird with the, with the, with the Engel gym. Like I'm not really seeing the typical Engel style just yet from Nicol Adams here. I normally see kind of the archetype thing from an Engel fighter. You know, hit and don't hit and don't get hit. It's not being quite that kind of classy kind of you know the Kelbrook Gal Galahad kind of levels. Obviously, he's not going to be in the Seam Hammer kind of level. She's showing some good things here, but. it's... Not quite translated yet at the moment, at least yet. Anyway, probably come through from Nicola Adams, but yeah. Uh, Ingle, uh, Brendan Ingle in the um, Dominic. It's the son, isn't it, Dominic? Ingle in the in the corner for Nicola Adams. She's taking punches like a. <laughs> this could go ten rounds. Yorkshire T for the win. This could go ten rounds. Uh, you're right. Um, Neither of them seem to have the power to affect each other as we go into the fourth round. I agree with you. Unless something kind of catches when they're off, you know, not expecting the punch or something. But yeah, it's likely that this will go 10 rounds. Maybe if there's a like an accumulation of punches, you know, if, if one of them isn't answering back, something could happen here. Yorkshire T for the win. Fair play to you. <laughs> As we go into the fourth round, 90 seconds left. Again, Salinas takes the front foot and Nicola Adams is backed up onto the ropes and they clinch. Good work to clinch and stop um, stop Salinas from coming forward. Salinas bobs and weaves trying to put off Nicola Adams. Tries to come in with a hook, which is just out of range. Good uppercut there as Salinas comes in. From Nicola Adams is really good, and then again, again clinches. So there, there was eye catching punch, and then to negate the action from Salinas in return, she clinches. That's good work. I think she just got caught with her right hand there. Might have just glanced off of her, but she moves out of range. Good, good left hook there from Salinas, and a right hook as well. Got to be careful here. She did some good work, did Adams, and just another right hook landed again in succession from Salinas, and another shoots to the body as well. Yeah, um, I forgot the commentator's name. He's really good. I forgot his name. Um, Barry McGuigan. It's Barry McGuigan. It's Barry McGuigan. Anyway, um, Adams has stopped using the stepping back with a jab, which is allowing for Salinas to come in with more effective and successful punches, especially these right hands that have landed in succession in this in this round. So maybe another round to Salinas here, which could even it up on the scorecards if you were scoring this. She's done well there. Call the winner. Predict Ames. Uh, if I had to pick someone to win this fight, I'd probably go with Nicola Adams. I think she'll have more in the tank. I think she'll have more variety. Uh, she should be able to do this. She's got she's got the pedigree for it. Just the thing with Salinas is Salinas is coming off of two fights already in this year and she's had 30 plus fights in total already so she's a lot more experienced so who knows in the latter part of this fight the experience could tell but Nicola Adams has the talent for it she just got to show it she, she can't negate using the uh, the jab to put off Salinas from coming forward clinching is good as well just don't forget the jab don't do don't do the clinch without the jab and don't do the jab without the clinch use both of them as we come into the fifth How about you, Vegan on Extreme? I'm sure you've got BT Sport on. I'm sure you've got the volume turned up and you're um, got
got your variety of choice. Who have you? Uh, who are you picking for this fight? There we go. The jab comes out, pouring out again. There we go. The double jab just to put off Salinas, and then she, Salinas will find herself out of range. When Nick Adams pours us up, pours out that jab, Nick um, Salinas is out of range. It comes in with a good right right hook off of that as well. They clinch in the in the middle ring, and uh, Adams pushes Salinas off to the ropes. Shouldn't be pushing again. A jab, which means that the right hook that Salinas jumps in with doesn't land at all. Neither of them um, with too much action here. Couple, uh, three jabs there, three single jabs from Adams. Again, putting off Salinas is good work. Allows for the right to come in as well. Just peppering. Just a couple of shots here. You hear Dominic Ingle shouting away, 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 trying to put Salinas off. And it's now, it might now become a thing where Adams is getting a little bit overwhelmed by someone she can't take out because she doesn't have the power and she keeps coming forward. And this could end up being a little bit, uh, could end up going a little bit more of a dogfight, as I said earlier. Like how, I mean, do you guys remember how Katie Taylor versus Delphine Pursun, um, that fight went? And Katie Taylor didn't obviously have the power to put off Pursun. Pursun just kept coming forward and tagging her with shots. Could end up going that sort of way. But she's doing, so far she's doing good work. Just, just jabbing, throwing the jabs. Not doing too much as of yet in this round. But she's won this round so far. Good. There we go. That's a great jab. It was a 1-2 and then the 1 that was a power jab. She gets in the corner and she clinches. Good work again from Nicola. 20 seconds left in the round. She gets tagged there as Nicola, as Selena steps in. She tries the overhand left, misses. I think she catches her on the right, but that's an Adams round just about. I think she listened to her corner there. See what you guys are saying. Hybrid 95, what up, Ames? What up, Hybrid? Good to have you here. Um, haven't seen you in the chat before, but I know you're obviously you're around in the um, boxing community as such. I've seen a little bit of of things um i try to catch up when i can obviously been quite busy but it's great to have you here if you're new here do um subscribe but good to have you on board on on the uh channel as well but great to have you here hybrid and good to have others here obviously uh, that are putting out boxing videos as such as well obviously like uh unrivaled tommy tempers doing stuff as well a boxing blunts has got his own things as well but good to have you here, hybrid welcome to the channel I, this is the first time i've interacted with you so yeah welcome to the channel good to have you here let me know what you think, um, Hybrid. If, you, if you're watching, that is. How you've seen this fight going and uh, who you think's going to win. Adams takes the back foot. As Salinas again comes forward, taking the center ring. Adams took the center ring a couple of times in the first couple of rounds. And now she's given it away to Salinas. She's electing to go around the side of... Um, go round, circle round Salinas, which is uh, allowing Salinas to be on the front foot. And it's obviously better to be on the front foot than is on the back foot and boxing. The clinch, a little bit of work going on. Nothing, nothing to really shout about. Steps forward with a one-two, nothing lands from Salinas. It's good body work there for Salinas as Adams ducks a left hook that's coming through. Good evasion there using the body. Again with a lazy right hook. Good body shot came in, left hook from Salinas on Adams. Adams has been evasive, ducks a couple of shots, which looks kind of good, but she's not throwing back a right hook, a right hand from Adams to try and stop Salinas. The jab isn't being poured out as much as it was in previous rounds. Again, stops her with a jab, but the thing is, the jab has now been used when Salinas is in range or more than in range, so that where the point is that if the jab's coming through, it's not stopping her from her offense, which is bad from Nicola Adams' point of view. And it's sloppy at the moment from Salinas, but it's uh, it's working. Good over, good overhand left there from Salinas on Adam. Sorry, she might need a lot of that E forty five after because she's get she's probably getting tagged up to the face. Again, leaping in with the left hook there, and Adam should be able to see this. There we go. Pour out that jab. Blocks, blocks a body shot from Salinas as Adams. Comes back with a body shot of her own. A couple of good body shots from Salinas there as they get head to head and Adams pushes her off. Right hand there from Adams on Salinas as they clinch again towards the ropes. As the bell for that round rings. Last King of Scotland. 
with a tie-in booth reference saying Nicola Adams is struggling. She's struggling a bit, yeah. She is, as this fight is worn on, she is struggling and she's, she's definitely lost, lost rounds in my opinion. They're just showing a really good um, shot of an overhand left that came through on slow motion. It's difficult. This is a difficult fight for her. And, um, yeah, as we go into the second half of the fight, I mean, it's going to be over soon. It's It's been a decent scrap, but obviously we're waiting for the, uh, the big fights to come on. This could turn into be be quite the struggle, as she's asking as Scotland's saying... Because she's only going to get more tired. She's only going to get more fatigued. She's only going to throw less punches if, unless she's been storing kind of, you know, more energy kind of thing. And the plan is to go later and then take her out as such. But seven, seven rounds, three rounds left. Well, four rounds left, including this one, isn't it? But um, again, Selena's on the front foot, taking the center ring, backing Adams onto the ropes. Sloppy, but closing her down. Nicola Adams moving to her left, trying to jab. Putting her off, but the jab is poor and it's not even trying to shoot. She tries to shoot like a right instead of setting up with a jab, and it's just not effective. And she uses a body weight to stop Salinas from uh, from shooting. Good shot there. It was a jab that stopped Salinas again. Just wobbled her a little bit, but it was more of an off balance thing as opposed to anything else. Good left hook there off of a combination, a three-punch combination ending with a left hook from Adams. But then she takes one in return. That was good work there. She got on the inside, Salinas, and I think it was a right hand that ended the combination from her on Nicola Adams. And she tagged her again with a right as she's stepping in. And that right as Salinas steps in is just landing, it's been landing a bit too much throughout this fight. And it's been it's, it's, it's quite a winging shot. So I think Adams should be able to see it, but um, it's landed way too often. Again, a little bit sloppy, but Salinas is doing well here as we come into the last 20 seconds of the seventh round. Good left hook there on the inside from Nicola Adams. And the jab, she's jabbing again. She's pushing Salinas down as they separate. Dodges a right hook by ducking under as they clinch. Jabs as the round ends. Better round. That's a little. That's one that was a little bit harder to, to kind of score. So I'm not scoring, obviously, but you know, a little bit more of an even even round. They're just showing a couple of replays. Good left hook there that stopped it. But again, like here we go. It was body a left hook, then an overhand right again. It's like a right hook kind of thing, which lands on. Nick Adams again. These aren't like kind of punches that hurt her, but like they're, they're landing, and she's. I think in the last couple of rounds, Salinas has landed just that little bit more than Nicola Adams. So I think pour out the jab a little bit more from Nicola. If you're getting, if you're going to continue getting your bike in such a mood around, that's fine. You can keep doing that, but pour out the jab as well with it, and throw a little bit more because Salinas is just coming on a little bit here. Bell for the eighth round, jabs from Nicola Adams on the back foot again. Selena's taking the center of the ring. Adams on the ropes. She moves off the ropes well, that's good. Takes a shot there, does Nicola Adams as she moves off um, to her left. She's a little bit like square on. Blocks a uh, left hook there, does Adams. Blocks the overhand right, which is good. She's jabbing to try and put off as Nick, uh, Salinas bobs and weaves. Good right hand, but then a jab knocks Adams' head back. Just misses, does a left hook from Salinas on Adams. Proper shot there, knocked Adams' head back. Good jab there, and she just misses another hook, does Salinas. Jabbed, uh, left hook to the body, which has landed from Salinas on Adams. 
Adam steps forward with a one, two, good. The two lands. It's a good shot. They exchange. Nothing really lands clean. There's a bit of a roar from the crowd. I must have missed the punch. Another, the same combination. Body with a left hook, then the over comes the right hand, which Adams has taken a couple of times. Comes in again, but Adams stops the right hand from coming through. They clinch and they're separated. Last 30 seconds of round eight. The commentators are saying Nick Adams is a little bit flat. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's lacked a little bit of energy, but she's done well at points. Uh, she's engaged at points, like look to kind of make, uh, you know, fight on the inside as well, which is kind of more Salinas' style, it seems. Or at least she has to, to try and negate, obviously, the height difference and reach and such. But with the skill sets and the opponent in front of her, at times when she's, you know, clinched, she used the jabs, pick some shots, she's done well. She just, it hasn't been as a lot of, or like, as much as I expected it to, to have been. As that bell for that round rings. So um, as we're waiting for the next round, if you're new here, I think everyone here isn't new. So it's good to have you guys back here again, as always. But if you are new here, smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm covering the contender. I'm covering boxing just in a different sense. Trying to make you laugh and entertain you. A couple of interviews on the way coming shortly. I've obviously done an interview with Jonathan Reed. The interview went 50 minutes with Jonathan Reed from the contender. And I don't expect you to watch all 50 minutes of it. I mean, if you have got time, please do. However, in the description of that interview with Jonathan Reed is timestamps for each question. So you can like literally guide yourself through the interview. And whichever like things you want to know from the questions I've answered, you can click on it and you can hear it. Uh, the guy gives some answers to what he thinks of Canelo, which is quite funny, as well as um, singing the national anthem. And he's a really good singer, you know. Um, check it. It's right at the end of the interview, and I've timestamped it as well, along with all the other time timestamps. The guy sings the national anthem. He's really, really good. Uh, his plan is like he wants one more fight. The guy says he's got one more fight, but like um, he's uh, he wants to also like sing at events as well. And he sang the national anthem for me um, at the end of the interview, and it's really good. And I don't think like the recording done it justice because the guy like the, his range and singer was so so good. So I mean, do check it out. Uh, but yeah, if you're new here, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. It'd be great to have you on board. Um, boxing, making you laugh, and covering the big fights, as it were. I'm going to confirm tomorrow if I'm um, doing Spencer supporter. Very likely I am going to be. It's probably like 85% likely. Just a couple of things got to make sure of. But yeah, I'll probably be doing Spencer supporter as well. So it'd be good to have you on board for that also. But yeah, the ninth round, last minute coming in. Same sort of thing. Nick Adams has clinched to negate Salinas' offense. Center of the ring, both of them. Salinas on the front foot, shoots to the body. Jabs from Nicola Adams to try and put her off. She's not punching it, putting it out as such as she was before. Good right hand there, pot shot there from Nicola Adams just to touch her up. Misses this time because uh, Salinas ducks under it but doesn't get her own offense since it's the clinch. Coming up to the last 25 seconds. 1-2 from Salinas. Again, with a, a jab as well. Just misses. They clinch again. Final 10 seconds. Good right hook there. Again... Adams just jabbing to put off Salinas. As that round ends, Ji Lung asks, how many more years until women's boxing goes mainstream, do you reckon? Let the final bell ring, and I'll answer that, because that's a really good question. I'm really glad you asked it, because I've thought, I've thought a bit about that, and I've equated it to different things that I've seen. So let the bell for that round, let the bell for the final round ring, and I'll answer your question. But um, that's also a question I want to put out to the chat as well. Like, So if you guys in here, how many more years or what do you think it will take for women's boxing to go mainstream? Because at the moment, it's you know it's obviously got the highlight that it's not had before. But to uh, have it kind of accepted on the level which men's boxing is, what do you guys think it's going to need to take? I've got my own ideas on it. Uh, it'd be good to hear what you guys think of it as well. Or even if you care, because I know people don't. I know people don't give a you know a rat's ass about women's boxing, which is each their own, I suppose. Uh, but I quite like it. I see it as uh, just the same as men's boxing as well. I think it needs to be three minutes. 
for me. I think they need to make that change. Um, just so it's, you know, just the exact same. Oh, just, uh, Salinas is coming forward. I think she knows she needs the knockout and just threw like a five punch combination. A couple of uh, punches landed on there. She's bobbing and weaving, coming forward, shoots the overhand right, just misses from Adams. Adams is being tentative, just pouring out that jab, making sure it's out there to stop Salinas as she comes forward, winging in shots here. Jo steps forward with a good jab there. Does Adams on Salinas. She's coming on strong here, Salinas. She's not moving. Adams is taking the center ring as well. Just trying to put her off. Now she's stepping towards the back of the ropes. A couple of jabs again just to put off Salinas. Another over, like a winging left. A right hook lands from Salinas on Adams and a jab as well. Sorry, from Salinas lands on Adams. Shoots towards the chest kind of area to Salinas on Adams as well. Good body shot from Salinas. Proper digs that one in. Adams takes it. Triple jab there from Salinas trying to get in, but Adams steps back with a jab herself. <laughs> German and British judge. Good to see how this is. Think Salinas lands with a right hook on the inside, so steps in, and then Adams steps out. Ducks down and evades the punches to Salinas. That's good work there. Good shot there. Another left left hook to the body. Another body shot from Salinas lands on Adams. Oh, she's going for it here. Go on. Well then, she's really game, Salinas. The bell for the final round ring. Salinas was really game, actually. Wasn't a pushover. I think Adams just about to take it, but she's lost rounds here. She, I think she's, yeah, she definitely won. But um, she was tough, tough competitor. Wasn't um, wasn't there to be stepped on or stepped over. So fair play to Salinas, and that's part of it. That's what I'm saying. It didn't turn out to be the trick. Well, it, it was a tricky test actually. In fact, they're actually uh, the lifting up Salinas. They're pretty confident in their corner that Salinas has uh, put got this in the bag actually. So be if they're seeing it that way, it'd be interesting to see how the judges have seen it. Because they're really confident. Really, really confident. Got her up on the shoulders. Just a commentator saying that people are a little bit anxious around ringside. So uh, this isn't a clear cut. I mean, for me, I think Adams has come through this. It could be close, whatever. But I think just from the eye test, Adams has come through this. But this was tricky. Like I said, it could be in the preview because obviously she's had a lot more fights. 30 plus fights. She's had two fights already this year. Commentator saying that looked as if Adams looked as if she was struggling with the weight. Called it called it awful at points. That's a bit strong. I don't think Nick Adams was awful. That's unfair. She did have the reach and the height in her favour. She didn't use it as effectively as she could. She might, Yeah, she definitely tired, obviously, towards the later rounds. But, I mean, you would, you do. I mean, against someone who just keeps constantly coming forward, like, it's proper, not demoralising, but it takes quite a bit out of you, doesn't it? If you've, if you've had that before in boxing. About it a bit to the degree in some sparring that I've done. And it just suck when they just keep coming forward. So here we go, let's listen to the scores. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Ingo Madraba scores it 96 to 94. 96 94. Oh, 96 94 Salinas. Okay. Judge Mihai Leu scores it 97 to 93. 97 93. It's got to be Adams. Right, so it's on the last one. It's a split decision. Judge Howard Foster scores it 95 to 95. It's a draw. It's a split draw. Well, 95. I, I knew it when he said 95, 95 has gone for a draw. She's got the wrong end of the stick there. The Mexican corner disgusted. They think that she won it. We thought that Nick 
They're in. They're not happy at all. <laughs> the Salinas corner are not happy. They're raising Salinas to the crowd, who's getting an ovation, to be fair, actually. She's getting a real big cheer from the crowd. Yeah, the crowd the crowd are really pro Salinas here. They think she's come away with a victory. That's a, that's a bit of a shocker too, because obviously it's Nicola Adams' home crowd, so. On first viewing, as I was saying to you guys, I think Nicola Adams done enough to win that. But obviously, the judges, you know, only one judge giving it to her, and then a draw, and then a two rounds to Salinas. But Salinas did do well. Maybe it's a fight. If I have time, I'll watch it again. But yeah, that's a little bit surprising. So last king of Scotland tells says draw tells you all you need to know. Adams is terrible. I mean, like if you compare Katie Taylor and then Nicola Adams at the moment, like one of them is obviously a lot longer down the line than the other. But Katie Taylor has come come a lot longer than Nicola Adams has. I do quite like Nicola Adams, but like I mean, layoffs and things having only six fights as such since you've like. What is it? Didn't the Dubois and Nick Adams turn pro at the same time? So, and look where Dubois is, and look where Adams is. You know, haven't had X amount of fights and such. So, I think this was a flat performance from her. Just a shame, really, because she's on a, a quite a big bill here. So, uh, I just yeah, she didn't perform, I suppose. But if I have time, I'll probably watch that again. Like, because I did see Selena's winning rounds, and she did cause um. Cause Adams that trouble as well, so who knows? So the crowd saw it. The crowd saw it. They were all, they're pretty much pro pro Salinas as well. So A boxing blunt saying Adams lacks actual aggression. Fighting South Americans is her Achilles heel. She's dreadful to watch. Actual aggression, yeah. I mean, she was on the back foot, wasn't she? She was on the back foot for the for the majority of the fight, not willing to take the center of the ring and. Kind of step in and engage. I mean, like like what Ingle fighters do sometimes. Step in, engage, step out. And we didn't see that a lot actually at all from Nicola Adams. We just saw her stepping around, keeping out of range and keeping off, which is good, which is fine if you want to do that. But maybe not the typical Ingle star. But again, in terms of being actual, actually aggressive, yeah, you're right. She lacked that in this fight. Fighting South Americans is her Achilles heel. Like, I don't know enough about Nicola Adams to have, have, have having had seen her in against fights against South, South Americans. So I have to take you on a word for that. But the thing is like... The combinations that Salinas were throwing were often throwing the same combinations. They were the f same combinations as well. They're frequent, and she should, and they came from quite far away, so she should have been able to see him. But um, maybe she, maybe she's not into it anymore. I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't want to speak for her, but um, like I said, for for me with Nicola Adams beforehand. I hope she kicks on. Let's see her in more fights. And, and she'll either she end up losing if you think she's terrible. Or she'll go on to do something more, uh, you know, with her belt and such a game or belt or whatever it is. If she has more fights and if she wants more fights. But we'll soon find that out. Maybe you might say she might have been found out here. Uh, it, was a, it was a tough fight. Both fighters had successes. It's, maybe it's one I need to watch again if I ever have the time. But yeah. So... Yeah, last king of Scotland. Taylor and Adams is night and day. Yeah, hundred percent. It's just Taylor has come on such a long way, and the pursuit fight was obviously tough. But it tells you where she is. She's collecting belts. She's a superstar in like what is it, Ireland and such. They love her there, and over in America as well because there's a lot of American Irish as well. They like her in America, so and that's where Adams should should have been or should be coming off of the Olympics, but she isn't. So, and sometimes it's one of those things that doesn't quite work out for every Olympian or amateur, you know what I mean, that turns professional, it doesn't quite work out. It might be too soon to say that, but, um, cause I mean, I can't say it on my first watching cause I thought she won it, but some people might say, uh, it might not work out for her on that performance, but hey. So G asked how many more years until women's boxing goes mainstream, do you reckon? So G, uh, obviously he's one of my mates. G loves MMA, 
I, I watch MMA, I'm more of a casual, I'm <laughs> casual with both probably. I'm not like a massive boxing expert, uh, but I do like to watch boxing quite a lot. Uh, might be understanding myself, but whatever, anyway. G watches a lot of MMA, I, I watch MMA and every now and again I flirt in with it. And the thing with MMA is they have that bit one big star in Ronda Rousey and it's going to take kind of a Ronda, Ronda Rousey kind of character or type to come into women's boxing and take it onto that next level and grab that mainstream attention. It's going to need that. If there was a female equivalent of Golovkin, then women's boxing would have that spotlight on it even more because it's something completely new. It's a woman who's knocking people. Like, not It might have happened before, not to my knowledge, but now in the current landscape of boxing, it's something completely new, if you get what I mean. Like someone who's knocking people out constantly on a streak is fierce, has that character where they're coming and wanting to kick your ass. You know what I mean? If they had that, then I think women's boxing would be catapulted onto kind of the mainstream sort of level, like it was with MMA. And then, you know, how it was with Ronda Rousey, she kind of found out, and then kind of the more legitimate UFC or MMA superstars. Sorry, MMA, yeah. Oh, they're starting straight away with the Declan Garrity um, Archie Sharp fight, which is really good. Anyway, in, whilst we're waiting for them to get into the ring, it needs that kind of woman to come through. And once that woman's come through and they have that spotlight, it will elevate women's boxing as well together. I mean, what's her name? I forgot her name now. Clarissa Shields isn't that person, at least from what I've seen of her. Katie Taylor is a little bit too nice. She's a superstar in her own sense. She's almost like a bit of an Anthony Joshua, that PR kind of thing going on with her. She's kind of like safe. She's very safe. Someone that could appear on the, like, you know, the Graham Norton type of shows. And don't get me wrong, Ronda Rousey could as well, but Ronda Rousey is, is has that badass element to her which Katie Taylor just doesn't have. So I think it needs that, or you know, a character to that similar sort of level to propel women's boxing up to the kind of mainstream level, and as well making it make it just make it even three minutes per round. Like um, I'm not sure why they do it. I don't know what it is, uh, but boxing is boxing, and you know there are, there are lots of fit women who can do shitloads and shitloads better than other boxers. You know what I mean? So male or female so give them the th give them the, um, the rounds that are three minutes each and let them have at it because I don't think there should be the element of it not being legitimate because it's on the point of it being a minute less it should just be blanket three minutes for women's boxing so uh, I think that th there needs to be that change because at the moment it's two minutes but yeah it's going to need that character to come through but uh, hey maybe none of you will ever watch women's, women's boxing it might not be a few I don't mind it that if you haven't seen it, if you don't like women's boxing and you haven't seen the Taylor Pursuit fight, watch that fight, then like come back to me and tell me, yeah, you know, I don't really care still because that was a really good fight. That was up there. Uh, really good scrap. So um, they're just making their entrances now. Archie Sharp versus Declan Garrity. Let's bring back some to my notes on Archie Sharp. That's just coming out to, that's the uh, Chelsea like theme song that they come out to, isn't it? couple of other ch famous Chelsea boxing fans. George Grove springs to mind as well. Loves his Chelsea FC. I remember him going to the ground in it um, in preparation for, was it the rematch for George Grove uh, for Carl Froch, the first fight. But yeah, I mean, um, his opponent, Declan Garrity, he believes he's been knocking on the door of the next level and things haven't quite worked out his way. He lost to McCullough in what he describes as a shot from God. <laughs> I mean, it reminds me of the punch from the gods that Joshua described, didn't he, against Andy Ruiz. Punch from the gods that caught him, you know, high in the temple and wobbled him and ended up obviously being the cause and the root to the end of the fight. He's also lost to uh, James Tennyson, the same James Tennyson who scored that rough, rough kind of hard to watch knockout for me anyway victory over Atif Shafiq a month or so back but Garrity said that he believes that they were like lucky kind of shots or in kind of lucky losses for him boy better know in the chat BBK can I list how many BBK members can I list off of uh, Temper T JME fuck I forgot already <laughs> the Skepta I'm going to go with those for the moment. But anyway, boy, but knows in the chat. i got to say, so far, this is a terrible card. Typical Frank Warren. Yeah, Frank gets a lot of uh, guff, doesn't he, for the cards that he puts on. And it might even go late as well, because people give shit to Frank for his uh, cards going late. I mean, it shouldn't go late, because there's only one fight after this one isn't there. 
But hopefully it's going to pick up with this fight because Artie Sharp is he's one to watch for me. He's, he's really, really good. I like I like him. So hopefully Artie Sharp will be able to you know, pick it up a little bit. There was a couple of fights in the undercard as well, like um, Hutchinson versus, I don't know the guy's name, but the guy had two tattoos, right? He has two tattoos. I think both of them, but I'm pretty sure the one on the left was Hannibal Lecter mask. Um, a tattoo on his face, Hannibal Lecter with the mask on. Absolutely hilarious. And the guy ended up getting starched anyway. But boy better know, if you're new here, great to have you here. It's the first time I've seen you in the chat. Pleasure to have you here. Smash the like button and subscribe if you're new here. Good to have you on board. Whilst waiting for this one, I'm covering boxing from... I did the big fights and then watching it. I'm covering in some jokes and being entertaining where I can. So it'll be good to have you on board. But yeah, I mean, check out some of the other videos as well, guys, if you haven't already. Shit boxing fans say where I look at kind of the things that people say and make jokes about it. The Contender, if you watched it back in the day, I'm covering The Contender and throwing some jokes as well. And I've got a video coming up in the week. The last King of Scotland, you see him in the chat, he asked me if Manfredo Senior was in uh, the first, or was in The Contender years back. I did some research and I found something absolutely crazy, absolutely ridiculous, meme-filled, funny. I can't wait to bring you that video. It's going to make you laugh once you've seen it because I'm sure you guys haven't seen it because it's like... And there's like a gem of a quote from a fighter from from whatever this thing is. I'm not going to give too much away. Which has been buried by the sands of time which I'm bringing back out. Because once I heard it, I laughed out loud so hard and I replayed it over and over. It'll be my um, new subscriber voice thingy once, it come, once I uh, put that video out for the uh, next live stream. But yeah, I'm looking forward to having that out and showing you that as well. But yeah, I mean... So far, it's, yeah, it's not been good. Boy, better no, I do agree with you. Hopefully, Archie Sharp can make a, can bring it back up a little bit, because he's for me, he's one to watch. He, he caught my eye against McCrory and against uh, Leon Woodstock Jr. But I mean, yeah, he Declan Declan Garrity, he lost to James Tennyson, the one that knocked out Atif Shafiq. He said it was unlucky. I mean, he accepts that he lost to his second fight to John O'Carroll, and I like John O'Carroll. Carroll versus Farmer was a really good fight. And that guy, like, he has a ridiculous engine on him. Lots of heart, too. I like watching him fight. But anyway, yeah, like, he accepts he lost to Carroll uh, the second time round anyway, because the first time round it was a DQ. But yeah, he's got another crack against a contender in Archie Sharp. Yeah, he's got another crack against Archie Sharp. A uh, contender in Archie Sharp, sorry. He believes he's knocking at the door. Well, it's time to bust that door down if you think you've been knocking that door down. Uh, the guy hasn't come to lose, judging by his pre-fight press conference comments. So it could turn into a pretty spicy affair. So I'm thinking this could be fight of the night. Um, but yeah, it's about to... Bell for the first round is about to ring and we have Sharp versus Garrity. Bell's ring for the first round. Declan Garrity jumps straight for the centre of the ring. Sharp looked like he wanted to take it, but Garrity just got there quicker. Sharp in that kind of... He's got that pink kind of colour in his, in his uh, shorts, which has kind of been synonymous with him. Kind of a sherbet kind of colour. Sharp, uh, Deck and Garrity shoots at the body with a jab. Sharp steps back and moves out of the way. Sharp trying to step in, taking that centre of the ring. Slowly stepping in, trying to find his rage. As Deck and Garrity touches his glove with his with his jab. Archie Sharp slowly stepping his, his left. He's stepping on his, his uh, foot is Sharp as they clinch. They're separated from the clinch. It's Howard Foster who scored a draw for the last fight. Adams and Salinas, who's in the ring for this one, refereeing this. Good shot there from Garrity. Steps in with an uppercut, I think it was. Sharp comes in closer. They're just touching other um, other feet. Archie's getting a roar from the crowd and he's caught. He's caught uh, Deccan Garrity there, but Garrity took it with a little bit of a hook as he came in. They're just standing off each other, checking each other out. Neither one's too encouraged to engage at the moment. Pouring out with a jab is Garrity. You can spy on Ricky Burns. Yeah, that's cool. Good shot there coming in. Really good shot, actually. It was a 1-2. The two landed really well on Sharp. Uh, from uh, Yeah, on Sharp from Garrity. They're coming with a head there. Garrity complains. Well 
Sharp's in the second, uh, is in the center of the ring, stepping Garrity back towards the ropes. Garrity moves around towards the left. Great jab there from, uh, sorry, it's a right, well, he's, he's southpaw, isn't he? So, well, he's stepping at least southpaw at the moment. So it's a great um, lead, a straight hand there from Garrity on Sharp, which knocked the head back. Sharp is cutting him off and he had him towards the corner, but Garrity moves towards the left. Sharp steps in, he's looking a little bit wild there. With that, none of it lands from Garrity. Garrity's doing really well here. Pouring out the jab is Garrity. Just trying to put off Sharp. Sharp's got a longer range, but he's not using it. Caught, gets caught again a little bit there. But does catch Garrity himself with a jab. Garrity tries to step in, but this time Sharp sees it coming and moves out of the way. Both their hands are quite low. So you never know quite when they're ready to engage. Good first round, actually. Really good first round. Declan Garrity did really well there. Um, looking to be the challenge that he said he would be coming into the fight. So good start. Do any of you guys in the chat also think that Sharp is a one to watch kind of prospect as I do? Because I quite, I quite rate him quite highly in the super featherweight division. Fights against Jamal Herring and uh, Tevin Farmer could be on the way for him if he comes through this. Let me know what you think of him. Is this your first time seeing him, seeing him at all? Or have you seen the same sort of thing as me as well coming into this fight from his previous fights anyway? Yeah, he just took a couple, of, he's got that kind of, he hasn't got the defense. Like he, he doesn't like to, to do an orthodox type of defense. He kind of relies on his, on stepping back on his reflexes as well. So he's an interesting fighter. Both of them pouring away with the jab, trying to find a way in. As Archer Sharp slowly creeps his way in, stepping into Garrity's lead leg. They clinch and as they spin around, Sharp trying to catch him with like a hook type of thing. Same sort of thing, they're standing off each other, slowly creeping in. They stand off each other, neither one's engaging just yet. They're both trying to counter each other as Sharp gets in a good shot to the body. Nothing like clean there. There's a little bit of wrestling as Howard Foster calls for a timeout to tell them both to kind of keep it, keep it kind of clean. But like I said, this could be, this could turn out to be spicy and it is. Archie Sharp switches stance, steps in, smothered. I said clinch. They're trying to work in the clinch. Referees allowing it to happen. A couple of shots to the body from Sharp and a couple of shots to the head from Garrity inside the clinch. Roll from the crowd for Archie, the pro Archie over here, as they would be in London. Getting a little bit sloppy, stepping over each other as they clinch. A little bit of wrestling going on. Good shot to the body there. Night, last 90 seconds of this round. First round was a little bit better so far. He's taken this opportunity so far. Two rounds in is Garrity. Guy, I think he's been believing that he's been knocking on the door. Well, so far you're doing well. You're, you're saying you're knocking on the door. Well, you're doing well here to kind of prove yourself at this kind of level. So steps in really strangely, does Garrity. Yeah, the flick of the leg, Roy Jones sort of style, says the commentator. Can't remember his name for life, man. He's... Anyway, steps from the jab, Garrity steps out of the way. Sharp really not doing much at all, actually, in these over these two rounds. Raw from the crowd, but nothing lands. It's all kind of sharp, smothering his kind of own work at the moment, really. Just winging in some shots. Sharp shooting, not sharp at the moment, but maybe he's just taking his time to warm into it. Declan Garrity steps Archie Sharp towards the center of the ring, lands a shot. Sharp towards the back of the ring. Declan Garrity lets him off the hook there. I think it's because it's towards the end of the round. 
Just want to take back that round, just guarantee. As the bell for that second round rings. Whilst we're waiting here, if you're new here, do smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'll do boxing, cover the boxing big fights and try and make you laugh with some of the boxing stuff that's on around the scene at the moment. Covering the contender, covering things that boxing fans say as well. Is it Lo Senior Marcelino? Uh, retracted your message. I haven't seen you in the chat before, but subscribe if you're new here as well. Hybrid 95 saying, I remember seeing Archie Sharp versus Leon Woodstock. That was a great fight. That was a good fight. Archie Sharp putting on a show there. Leon Woodstock just kept coming forward and Archie Sharp was able to negate him. Saw the highlights of it. Good good knockdown as well. I believe there's one, at least one knockdown there. It was a really good fight. But then the McCrory fight as well was the one for me that kind of put Archie Sharp in my eye kind of thing. So, um, so yeah. Um... He's good. He's a good prospect. He's just um, got a challenge in front of him in the form of Declan Garrity here. I think Marcelino you know, uh, said reactor episode two or something. I didn't quite see the message in the corner of my eye, but good to have you here nonetheless. If you're new here, Marcelino. Marcelino, sorry. Stepping off each other in the third round here. Sharp tries to wing in a shot, doesn't step in with a jab. Declan Garrity does his own little bit of flair, kind of shaking the shoulders around as he gets in with a jab on Archie Sharp. Just struggling here with a southpaw is Declan Garrity. Is Archie Sharp, sorry, in the form of Declan Garrity. Steps in with a jab, does Declan Garrity, which lands and then he clinches to negate the action back from Sharp, which is good work. Declan Garrity just standing his ground as Archie Sharp just creeps his leg for and watching the feet. I'm watching the feet here. Um, Sharp is trying to get his foot on top of Garrity's and then kind of come in. But Garrity is quite smart too at the moment. A bit sloppy there. It's, they um, clinch and the shoulder comes through and knocks the head back of Archie Sharp. It's got to be careful because it's getting a little bit sloppy. It has been sloppy at points in these three rounds in terms of clinches and throwing each other around. But you won't want to take too many of those shoulders to the face. Is there a cut? Yeah. I thought it looked like there was a cut. I think it might have happened in the first or second round. They're talking about something. It could be a cut. Sharp cuffs his uh, hands. Yeah, there is a cut. It's on his left eye. Sharp's back in the Garrity towards the ropes, but he's not. He's not punching at the moment. He steps in and Garrity then moves out of the way quite intelligently. Good work there from Garrity. Gets in a. Gets in a lead right there on the ropes and then they split as Garrity steps forward with a six punch combination a couple of those punches land leading off with an uppercut towards the end they then exchange and Archie Sharp lands in a good shot on Garrity as they clinch and they're separated just starting to liven up a little bit now Archie Sharp shoots a lead and then an uppercut and they both miss Garrity moves out of the way steps off to the back of the ropes Good shot to the body there from Garrity on Sharp. Good shot there. A couple of good shots towards the end of the round. Or one right on the bell. I think Garrity just about takes it. But um, good. It's starting to spice up here. Again, whilst we're waiting for the next round, smash the like button. It helps me out loads. It's not just a YouTube thing. So if you haven't and you're here and you've not smashed the like button, Please do smash it. I've got a new saying that's coming up for that. Once I've put out my next video, I'm going to change saying smash the like button to saying something else. Uh, I can't wait for that, but yeah. What's the weight? It's super featherweight. In pounds? Uh, good question. So it's a clash of heads that's caused the cut. It's 130 pounds. 
<coughs> yeah, so the answer is super featherweight. It's 130 pounds. And yeah, it's 14 pounds to a stone, as you said in the chat as well, hybrid. Had to Google that, not going to lie. <laughs> Had to make sure. Round four, uh, it's not going to end by technical draw decision. Knockdown there, was that a knockdown? That had to be a knockdown. I think sharp knockdown Geraghty. How did Foster's not calling it? I think he's calling it a slip or something, but I swear a punch led to that, to him touching the ground. It, was a, it looked like a heavy shot, even if it pushed him. Yeah, that hybrid, did you see it as well? I swear that was a knockdown. I'll have to see it again, but it looked like the even the force of the push of the shot dropped Declan, even if it's off his feet, but that was the punch that caused that, so. Yeah, that's a bit strange. I, ha I want to see that back again. But... Sharp looks like he's confident in being able to walk through Declan Garrity, so he's cuffing, he's cuffing up to the forehead and wanting to step forward to him. He's just not shooting just yet. He's off, he's off balance here, and Sharp, Declan Garrity looks a little bit, a little bit all over the place. Uh, one minute left, just over one minute left of this fourth round. Declan Garrity stepping towards the ropes, just trying to feint. Misses Desarchi Sharp with a with a left. Sent back in the center of the ring. Good shot there. Whoa! Oh! He's, he's out. Oh, what a shot that was. Absolutely flattened him. He's not moving. He's not moving at all. He's stiff as a board. What a shot that was. I said he looked on... He looked on shaky legs. And I thought he got knocked down from a punch. The force of the punch in the first place when he touched the gloves. But Sharp has stepped in, I think. He's ducked in and he's come up with a... I need to see it again, but he come up with two shots. At least how I remember it, and absolutely just lights out, lights out Declan Garrity from Archie Sharp, and this is the prospect that I was saying that he he could turn out to be with just an absolutely devastating knockout of Declan Garrity. The guy's 50-15 percentage-wise in terms of his knockouts. Declan Garrity's up, thankfully, which is good, and to fair to the credit to the man that is Archie Sharp as well. The first thing he did was go over to Declan Garrity when he was still down, you know, to, to check on him. Obviously, the referee waved him away. But that was an absolutely devastating knockout from Archie Sharp and Declan Garrity. Hopefully, they show it again. But it came out of absolutely nowhere, in a sense, because it did look like he had him down in terms of knockout. And Archie Sharp was was wobbling Declan Garrity. But then he came in with a, sh with a couple of shots and just dropped him. Absolutely rocked him to the core, stiff as a board, down for what looked like 90 seconds to two minutes. He's all right, he's speaking, he's in the corner. But that punch from the gods, Declan Garrity said before, he's been stopped by a punch from the gods before. And this isn't a punch of the gods, but what a punch it was from March Sharp, who has that in his locker, improves his knockout record or ratio even. What a shot that was. What a shot that was. And, and and he knew it. Here we go. We're getting a replay now. He's stepping in. He's stepping in low. And he catches him. He just catches him on the button as he's dipping low. He doesn't... S Bang. Yeah, he's throwing. He's throwing. And he throws a, he throws a left hook as he's low. Great shot. Dipping low. Here comes... He sees the left hook. sees the opportunity. Bang. And as Declan... As Garrity's throwing his own left hook... You don't hook with a hooker. One's thrown to the body, or like an uppercut maybe he was trying to throw. Archie Sharp, sharp as ever. Took a couple of rounds, or took a few rounds to get into it. Drops him, absolutely rocks him with a left hook, and he's out. Lights out for Declan Garrity. Archie Sharp, the sharpshooter. 
ices. He absolutely iced Declan Garrity there. Great shot. Hybrid 95. Oh my god, he knocked him the fuck out. My bad, I think you're backed up. Spoiler. Not a problem. Not a problem. If you're ahead of me, don't worry about it. Just crack it on in the chat. It's not a problem at all. Um, but yeah, that was... I thought... When you said, oh my god, I thought you meant the knockdown. Because I thought there was a knockdown previously. I thought you were... I thought you were saying that. Like, you thought it was a knockdown as well and it wasn't called. But yeah, obviously you were ahead of me and you saw that. And it was just devastating. Absolutely devastating. He's there. It's good to see that Declan Garrity is there. He's hugging him and he's, he's able to answer, like... Uh, and Well... You know, answer the um, the official kind of the official decision. The shake hands as well. I want to see that that quote unquote not non knockdown as well, because it was knocked down for me from the first viewing. And he, a success, a second successful defense for Archie Sharp in beating Declan Garrity by knockout. In devastating fashion. And those fights are there for him now. Jamal Herring, where are, where are you at? <laughs> Tevin Farmer, where are you at? Javante Davis, where are you at? Archie Sharp not letting me down, proving to be the sharpshooter. Absolutely devastating. What a shot that was. Just wait. I don't think they'll show it, but that was that was a really good shot. Really good shot. Good counter left hook for the sharpshooter, as Hybrid ninety five is saying. It really was. It was a really good shot. Last King in Scotland saying when you drop the Manfredo clip. It's a video. It's a video. The script is written for the video, and I'm gonna record it hopefully on Monday. It hope will be out before Thursday. So don't worry about it. It's coming. But I gotta thank you again for asking that question, which led me to what I'd found. Um, yeah, That's, I don't want to give anything away just yet, but you're going to, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to enjoy the video when I, when I do drop it. Cause it's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. What I found funny as hell. So yeah, if you're, if you're here and you haven't smashed the like button, please do smash the like button. Helps out a load with the channel and subscribe. If you're new here, if you aren't new here, it's great to have you in here as well. Obviously you guys last King of Scotland here as usual. Ivory 95, first time I've seen you in here, but it's, a, it's good to have you in here as well. Obviously, I've seen you around in the, in the chat and stuff like that. But yeah, that was a really good fight. It took, it looked like it was going to be a difficult test for De uh, for Archie Sharp from Declan Garrity, but he just, out of the locker, he went to his locker, he pulled out that left hook, and he had, he had time, he had lots of time. He, he saw that shot, like what, a good... Five ten seconds before he actually threw it, and Declan Garrity elected to try and shoot with him and just got put <laughs> put down. So yeah, well, who was it that put? Boy, better know if you're still in here. Does does that kind of lift it up a little bit for you? In that this was um you were saying it's a bit of a shit card. Does that lift it up for you? So uh, I thought that was good. Good performance from Archie Sharp, who had a bit of a challenge in the first four four rounds there. But yeah, now we've got the main event, hopefully. Dubois versus Tete. It's not hopefully not going too late, as these Frank Warren cards do tend to do. But yeah, this is the main event now, and it's Dubois. Whilst we're waiting for the main event, Daniel Dubois, let's talk a little bit about something that happened that was announced this week. And that was, of course, Nigel Benn, his return to the ring. And, like, I mean, what really to say? Like, if you don't know, Nigel Benn is back at the age of, what is it, 54 or 55, in what is billed as a fight for closure against former The Contender Season 3 participant. Bit of a bit of a link in there with what I'm doing, The Contender. If you watched it back in the day, I'm covering The Contender, making you laugh and entertain you with it. So check it out. The link is in the description. Also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you haven't already, um, just so as I update some of my videos and see what I'm doing. But yeah, Sakio Beaker from The Contender, Season 3 participant. I won't spoil it if you haven't seen Season 3. But also a belt holder and a contender who has been in fights with Carl Zaghi, Stevenson, Darrell, Andre Ward. And, you know, wasn't he the one that was Saki? Well, am I right in saying Saki Bika was the one that he put his title up on the press conference where it was Frotch versus Groves? It might have been this fight. 
And Saka Bika, like, kind of interrupt the press conference, like, here, you can have this belt as well, you can have this belt as well, like, kind of saying, like, I'll take the winner kind of thing. Was that him for that fight? Let me know if you guys' memory is, is better than mine. But I think it was. But yeah, he tried to get the fight, didn't he? And he only fought a couple of years back. And he's tough, isn't he, Sakia Bika? It's not an easy opponent for Ben. It's said that they're friends. And I don't know if you can read into anything like that. But they are acquainted to some sort of degree. Uh, I don't know if you can read into that. Anything like, for example, maybe it being it going round and then, you know, Beaker's agreed to go down. I don't know. I'm not conspiracy theorist, but they are friends. They've got some sort of acquaintance with each other. And he tried to get Steve Collins, didn't he? He tried to get Steve Collins and apparently it became about money. I'm just showing the replay of the, the shot. It's such a sweet shot. Declan Garrett is like trying to shoot an uppercut from like below his waist. A hook and uppercut from below his waist. He's off center. He's off balance they're just showing crowd shots and it was just an absolute cracker of a shot there's an interview here with Archie Sharp and we can't quite hear it the mic's not so he's just talking into silence there is a cut so there was a cut on his left eye just above the just towards the left of his eye <laughs> to the eyebrow just under it like um, almost a la Tyson Fury but just not as worse thankfully for him it's not not worse like that. But it's got like the makings of it. It could, it could have been a lot worse as that fight progressed. But we can't hear the... Um, we can't hear the, the commentary, unfortunately. So anyway. Yeah, it tried, to be, it tried to get Steve Collins, apparently. And it became about money after negotiations. And Nigel Ben didn't like that. He tried to get Chris Eubank. And that's what we've all kind of heard, haven't we? We've heard... Over throughout the years, I swear, I think it's been like five years, there's always been that rumour of a Chris Eubank, Nigel Ben fight, hasn't there? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> there's always been that rumour that there's going to be a Chris Eubank, Nigel Ben rematch fight that was going to come out, you know, for the last five years. You'd always read it. And he tried to get Chris Eubank, didn't he? And apparently, from the interviews that I've seen, Nigel Ben <laughs> was getting played around by Chris Eubank. Chris Eubank forgot where he put his pen I think again well this that was time was for his fun for his son anyway but yeah he apparently played him about and frustrated him and then they tried for Roy Jones and like I mean Roy Jones is still going isn't he the last fight was against Scott Sigmund was it and Roy Jones apparently asked for 10 million and I don't think there's that money in that sort of sense floating around at all so Roy Jones, as soon as he made that demand, apparently they've got like the, they can prove it as well, like from the emails or texts or whatever it is. Asking for 10 million was just silly money. Crazy, crazy money. And it was going to be Collins because. But they were moving things around, and apparently Nigel Ben prayed for someone because he's obviously religious now. He found God. He prayed for someone to step in, and uh, someone did step in. It's Sakya Beaker who's taken it, and here we are Ben versus Beaker. And I don't really know what to say about it. Like, let me, guys, let me know what you think about it because, like, I'll tell, I'll give you my age here. I've never seen Ben fight. Um, I've not seen a lot of fights, like, let's say, pre 2009, because uh, just of my age and, like, not being into boxing back then um, as much as I was, like, or I am now. So, and I want to do something fun with that, actually. So, I'm going to get your guys' opinions, like, your guys' recommendations on things and I'm going to put it into a video you'll see what I mean it's a future video I've got planned it's going to be a fun video but anyway and I've, ju I've just got into Roy Jones's career and I've started off at the tail end well not quite the tail end but the tail end of him being you know at prime level in his fights with Antonio Tarver the trilogy the first fight was really good the second fight obviously with a knockdown and the first, I mean they're all really good fights but the first fight was really really good a anyway I'm trailing off a little bit but yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to say about this Nigel Ben Sakya Bika comeback. It's a strange one. Let me just check everything on my end. Obviously, we're there. Yeah, we're good. So, yeah, I mean, what, what can I hope from it? I mean, what I do hope is that those who have sanctioned the fight have gone, they've made Ben go through every single test 
for him to go through and make sure it's like the toughest test for him to go through for them to then sanction it. Obviously, the British Boxing Board of Controllers said, nope, we're not giving you the, um, we're not sanctioning that fight at all. And then as well, Bieber have come in, is it the British Irish Boxing Association, whatever it is, have come through and they've given it. Like, I'm not a doctor, I'm no scientist or anything, but I'm, I'd, I'd assume at that age, getting into the ring and taking punches, I hope that every precaution is taken because after that fight, I don't want any kind of, I don't want to have to hear any kind of life altering things to have occurred as a result of that fight. That's my kind of number one thing that I look at when I heard this fight. Because he's going to do it. Like, as fans, like, what are we going to say? No, no, don't do it. No, don't do it. Everyone would have, would have told him from this, from the point that he had it incepted, uh, the inception of the idea in his mind to now where it's kind of, you know, manifested. He would have had no, don't do it throughout the way. So you know what I mean. What can us fans really do about it? You know, it has to be those people that are in his circle to tell him, no, you shouldn't do this. But anyway, because it's happened, on the flip side, it's going to happen. And one good, one good thing I could take from it is that the, the good thing I do draw from it is that the fight's happening and it's in Birmingham. And I'm from around the area and it's good to have fights back around here and big fights back around the area because, I mean, Birmingham's kind of an often neglected kind of area for boxing at least. I mean, the last one I think was Khan a year or so back, wasn't it? It was against it's Khan versus Le Greco and it finished really quickly, didn't it? Um, and it's been slim pickings otherwise you know what I mean and that's a positive to bring back boxing to this area whether I go to it is another conversation you know what I mean the boxing back in this area is, is good in that sort of sense so I mean he's going to have the fight it's not going to nothing's going to stop now so I mean are you, are you guys watching it because again like I've not I've not grown up watching Ben so I don't really know too much about him I just know that Whenever I talk to people that are older, let's say, for example, I remember talking to my my dad's friend, my fr sorry, my friend's dad, and he'd talk about the Dark Destroyer, Nigel Ben. I've seen the clips as well, you know, the parliamentary procedure and little highlights of the Ben Eubank fight. Obviously, I know about Ben McClellan and things like that. But, like, in terms of his whole career <coughs> and his other fights, I, I don't know too much about him. I just know that he was a feared puncher, um, obviously, in the middleweight division as well. He was, was a WBC champion. Uh, but I don't know too much about him and I haven't seen him fight. So, I mean, in that sort of sense, it'd be good to see, you know, Ben fight in the flesh. Obviously, like, I'm not going to, at this point, I'm not going to go to it, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, for for younger fans to have heard about a legend coming out of retirement to fight, there's that sort of plus, I guess. You know, I might be reaching there a little bit, but it is it is a plus in a sense, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah. And then, uh, as well, you've got, <laughs> and then to add to that... Uh, first of all, let me know what you think. I'll read. I'll read your comments out in a moment. Like what you think about Ben and, and Ben coming back. Whether you think he should come back. What you think is going to happen. And would it be the end? Like would it be the end of Ben? Like what? It's a fight for closure, right? So what does closure look like? Should he beat Beaker? Let's say he knocks out Beaker. What does closure look like? Does closure look like another fight? Or to know that you can fight still against Beaker, who's tough and durable and always will be tough and durable. Do you go? Do you then get Nigel Bell fighting on another fight, which is just another, you know, can in itself? Or then the face of, what does the face of closure look like if he if he gets lost, if he loses, and he he's get hurt in his loss? You know what I mean? Does he get that closure? I mean, I, I don't know. The, the guy is um, the guy's going forward with it, and I suppose you got to give him that credit for going forward with it. It's breaking, but it's breaking a barrier in a sense. You know what I mean? To have him in the ring at that age. But what will, what will come of it? Uh, just before I read your comments. Smash the like button if you're new here. And subscribe to the channel. Doing live reactions to the big fights. As well as covering the contender. In a funny sort of sense. Making you laugh and entertaining you. As with other videos as well. Looking into what you guys say about boxing. Make some jokes and skits about it as well. Great to have you on board if you're not on board already here. So let's see what you guys have, have said about it. So Last King of Scotland saying, I absolutely I absolutely love Nigel, but don't want to see him fight again. But it's his decision. I mean, yeah, that's that's exactly it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we're not going to be able to, like, don't do it. You know, Ali was saying in that thingy, like, Ali was obviously playing off the high level of consciousness I've seen in this interview. He's like, don't do it. 
don't do it, don't jump, don't do it. You know what I mean? Us down here looking up at him kind of thing and we're not on this level playing field, you know, knowing what he sees, etc., etc. And that's that's what Ben will have in his head, you know what I mean? He's got his thing, he's got that one track mind and it's it's strange. Like after interviewing Jonathan Reed, Jonathan Reed was Jonathan Reed is forty eight and he's like us boxers, we've we've always believed we've got one more in us. And he he wants to fight on as well, does Jonathan Reed. So like I think you know, I'm I'm not a boxer. I, I like to box to keep fit and I've I've done a bit of sparring as well in the boxing that I've been doing recently, but like I mean I wouldn't wanna, but um, when it comes to professional boxers who've been in that limelight and things like they have always, it seems to be that they always want that fight and like, it's it's him, it's him coming out to fight and it's his decision as Laskin Go Scotland was saying. And rival boxing talk and news, Beaker will knock out Ben. That's the thing, like, I know, are you gonna watch it in rival boxing talk and news? That's King of Scotland. Are you going to watch it? Hybrid, are you going to watch it? Just a question to you guys. I'd, I'd like to know because it's like um, it's on like a weird subscription service. It's like forty ninety five, or like tickets are like 50, tickets start at 50 quid at the resorts world, which is quite pricey, I think, for for this fight. But anyway, yeah, Beaker, like, it, let's say Beaker does knock out Ben Wright. What does that mean? Like, they're, 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 they're having, they're going to have brains scanners and brain surgeons ringside for that fight. I mean, that just tells you like a lot about it, doesn't it? Sorry, I just thought I heard something. So it's it's very, uh, it's a big risk, isn't it? It's a really big risk. And I, I, I wouldn't want to see it. Would you want to see it? Would you, who wants to see Ben getting knocked out at 54? Not good, not good. Last King of Scotland, Beaker was still fighting two years ago. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at like when when the feelers were coming about who, like who it could be. I was looking and researching like from BoxRec who has been, the criterion was a fighter who held the WBC championship and had fought two years ago. And I was looking, and I didn't come across Beaker, but Beaker was said in the Off the Hook forums. If you're not, you haven't been to Off the Hook. Off the Hook is a great forum. I'm on there as well. It's really good. So check out Off the Hook as well. But anyway, I was on the Off the Hook, off the hook forum and I was looking around and I was thinking like, could it be someone like Nathan Cleverly? But Nathan Cleverly never held the WBC. Um, could it be someone like Miguel Cotto? And then I thought like, what would Miguel Cotto want to do there? And it, and it's, it was at middleweight. I didn't realize it was not a middleweight, sorry. Um, and then you, had, then you heard Sakyo Beak and it all just kind of made sense because apparently he promoted him or like they're friends and such. So like, yeah, Beaker still fighting two years ago. St always been, always been tough. He's been in with Stevenson. He's been with Andre Ward. He's been in the high level and Ben taking that risk. Ben's Ben just wanted to jump in at the deep end. Like, and what if? Let me put throw this out as well. There, what if it was Ben and Collins? Would you guys be like, eh? All right then, because it's kind of like a 54, 54, 55 year old against a 54, 55 year old. You know what I mean? So would you be like, eh? That's more acceptable. Or is it because it's a 54-year-old and Sakio Beaker that makes it worse? Just I'm just throwing it out there. Like I'm just I'm just thinking this off the cuff. You know what I mean? Because it, it's just it's just rough anyway. But um he's gonna do it. So I mean if you want to support it, you, you can support it. If you don't, you don't. It's it's up to you. You know what I mean? Um but yeah, it's it's tough. Damn, I thought my TV was messed up. I couldn't hear Archie Sharp either. Yeah, it was it's the um BT Sport or whatever it is we're watching it on. I'm only 24, but definitely watch Nigel Ben versus Jeremy McClellan. Great fight, but unfortunate end for McClellan. Okay, so that's going to go on my list, Hybrid 95. And that's going to be on my list for a future video where I'm going to explore this sort of concept of, of that. Because so, I'm a sort of similar age as you, Hybrid. And I've not seen a lot of, a lot of these fighters or fighters, and, you know, in their heyday because I've missed it because of my age and such. So I'm going to write that down right now on the new list and that will go and you'll, you'll see that it be included. Nigel Ben versus Gerald McClellan. That, you'll see that included in a future video. I know what happens. Obviously it's like, it's notorious. I've seen boxing documentaries. I've seen like, you know, highlights of knockouts and things. That fight is notorious. Um, so I know what happens. 
and I know what's happened of him. And if you've seen that clip, like, how many of you guys in the chat have seen that clip of, I think it's, no, um, McClellan's in the wheelchair, right? And his carer's with him. I'm not sure who it is, if it's a family member, but his carer's with him, right? And he's like having that conversation. He's like, this is the guy you fought, Nigel Ben. And McClellan's like, this is the this is the guy that did it, did this to me. This is the guy that did this to me. And like the carer's trying to like console him and, you know, try and make it kind of like a cordial thing and not like a serious thing. But like um, McClellan's just like so like absorbed, like this is the guy that did this to me kind of thing. And Nigel Ben, it's, it, this is Nigel Ben and McClellan, right? I just want to make sure I'm, ri I'm writing this, but I'm pretty sure I am in that video that I saw. And then Nigel Ben's like crying his eyes out, isn't he? Uh, we just got, I'm um, just going to pull this back. Ebenezer Tete is making his entrance now, so we're not far off this main event fight here. Dubois versus Tete. Anyway, yeah, like, Ben's in tears, and, like, he's got to understand as well that, realistically, something like that could happen to him. And I, I imagine he, he does realise that. I imagine he's, he understands those risks, and he's not going into this blindly and just thinking, yeah, I'm the old Nigel Ben. But I just imagine he's got that taste of it with Connor Ben and leading him out to the ring, and he's just... Felt, you know, tasted it and wanted it again, and here we are. Last King of Scotland, Ben was a warrior. One of the most exciting fighters to watch. When he got hurt, he was so dangerous. I read that in the comments. Like, or someone said, I can't remember who it said it. It's just one of those comments I read. It said, one of the best things to happen to Ben in this fight is that he gets clipped early because he's dangerous when he's hurt. So that could be the best thing for him to have for him to happen that he gets hurt so yeah like i've heard that i've heard that he's a warrior i've heard that he was always dangerous when he got hurt as well so he probably stream it mate fair enough yeah honey Hunnigan versus sylvester mitty two on the undercard i'll tell you something that is on the undercard mr e mr e first time i've seen you here great to have you here welcome to the channel if you haven't subscribed please do it'll be great to, be great to have you on board um and smash the like button as well if you haven't Check out some of the videos and you'll see I'm doing boxing a little bit different as well as covering the big fights. But great to have you here, Mr. E. It's the first time I've seen you here. But yeah, um, <laughs> well, Harold, Harold Graham. Did you see Harold Graham? He was like, I don't want to fight you. I wanted to fight you years ago. But like, no, I'm not having it. But I wish you all the best. And there was like a little bit of confusion as to who it was. And But like, obviously, Harold Graham was just playing a bit of a joke. But what is under the other card is another legend. Ricardo Mayorga is facing Tommy Jacobs. And Tommy Jacobs uh, gave me a follow on Twitter a couple of days back. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you haven't, at take, at take Ames. Link is in the description as well. But Tommy Jacobs, there's a, there's a live, sorry, I'm going to cut myself short. There's a live rendition of, what is it, like Dracula? The Dracula theme on piano leading Daniel Dubois out. Why? <laughs> it's very strange. Or is this Phantom of the, Op Phantom of the Opera? I don't know. It just reminds me of Dracula. Is he going to come out in a cape and fangs? What is this? What is this? <laughs> the man on the piano. Yo. It's pretty good. What the... Okay, now they're coming out to some Will Smith. <laughs> Bit of a strange entrance. Dubois looking the same Dubois as usual. But anyway, sorry. I forgot where I was. Yeah, uh, someone who did give me a follow, Tommy Jacobs. Um, he's fighting another le legend on the card, and it's Ricardo Mayoga. 45-year-old Ricardo Mayoga is going to be on the undercard against Tommy Jacobs. And I dropped him a message. I said, you know, best of luck in your fight. Uh, you know, go get it, champ. Against Ricardo Mayorga, but yeah, he's under the card as well. <laughs> it won't be Lloyd Hunnigan, but Ricardo Mayorga is there again. Someone who I haven't seen a lot of his career. I just know that Mo Ricardo Mayorga threw like awkward shots and stuff like that. And he's quite notorious in terms of his press conferences. Just gonna lower that a little bit down so I don't get copyright claimed because of the song. But he's come out to boom shake the room from Will Smith. Obviously playing off of the dynamite Dubois kind of thing. But yeah. What? Who else is going to be on the undercard as well? Because Connor's not fighting on that undercard. He said he's not fighting on there. But Tommy Jacobs is. 
against Ricardo Mayorga. All the best to him. Um, it's interesting. It is interesting. That's the thing you can't say about it. It's not uninteresting because it is. Um, so, yeah. I mean, is that a fairer fight? You know what I mean? Because Mayorga's 45. And I think Tommy Jacobs is in his 30s. But, I mean, I hope Tommy does well. I hope he, Tommy's someone who's looking for opportunities. And I hope he gets it coming off of this fight. So... It's, that'll be interesting, you know what I mean? <laughs> Tommy Jacobs and Ricardo Moroga when they get into it with each other. So That's King of Scotland. I'd watch Ben versus Eubank, definitely. I, again, I've seen bits of Ben versus Eubank. That's going to go on the list as well for on the videos for the idea that I've got. So let's put this on here. Ben versus Eubank. If anybody in the chat here has got any fights, whether it be, whether it be a fight or in press conference... Or, you know, something out the ring that is notorious or something that I won't have seen because, you know, my age and things like that. Um, from the history of boxing that you think I should see. I'm going to pull it onto the list and it's going to go into a video uh, when I've, I've got an idea for it. So shout it out in the in the chat there. And I'm going to pull it on this list as well. And I'll check them out literally as, as many as you can, if you can think of anything. One of them that's going in on there is um, Hagler Hearns where... I think it's Hagler who's got like the tissue paper in his ears and he's trying to block out Hearns. Um, that's going to go on there as well because I need to. I've, I've only, again, I've only seen bits of Hagler versus Hearns and that's notorious, isn't it? So, you know what I mean? I'm showing my age here. I've obviously I've seen the thriller in Manila, you know, Ali Foreman and such. Room of the Jungle, whatever, whichever one it was. But yeah, I've seen, I've seen Ali fights. I've seen Ali documentaries, but if you've got any ideas, like throw them out there, and I'll put them down into list because there's quite a few of them. But yeah, like we're just getting in now to the official introductions. Tete versus Dubois. If you're in here and you're listening, I want your prediction and your round. If you're going by knockout, I know a lot of you're going to say Dubois. I'm probably going to see a lot of Dubois in there. I'm going for Dubois inside five. That's my that's my official prediction. Good to hear what you guys think of it. Um, but hey, it should be a good fight if it's anything like uh, the Latte fight, which is a good fire fest at times. I put out on Twitter that um, they were fighting like their names were Captain Hook because they just traded hooks, didn't they? There was that succession of trade of hooks, which was really cool. <laughs> it makes for a really good boxing gif. But Tete doing a little light shadow boxing. The guys are here. The translator is here as well from, the, uh, from earlier in the press conferences. They've been quite, um, you know... Calm and collected. Very, very, very hard to read. Ebenezer Tete. Last King of Scotland. You, you're. Uh, I remember you bet for the last one, didn't you? And now you've bet today. You bet thirty on three or four for Dubois. Tell me how much you stand to win. And again, I'm rooting for you. That um that that bet comes through. So yeah, let's just. Quickly, whilst we're waiting for this Dubois fight to start, what to say really about Dubois? I did a stream for the Nathan Gorman fight. You can watch him back if you like. And that fight was billed as a 50-50 for the British heavyweight title. We had a big one back only a few years ago, years ago with White and Joshua. Just uh, gone down here. Which would be a shame if that's the case. But let's just quickly try and find something. Seeker Boss, I'm a Ghanaian. I believe Tete will pull a surprise tonight. His performance will be great tonight. Okay, Seeker, uh, great to have you here. Um, you're obviously new to the channel. So if you are new, smash the subscribe button. It's great to have you here. Great to have a Ghanaian point of view and perspective. Tell us about Ebenezer Tete. Have you seen much of him? Like, Let us know a little bit about him because we don't, like I at least I don't know a lot about Ebenezer Tete. So it'd be great to know like what what do you see in him to pull off that surprise performance. But smash the subscribe button. It's great to have you here. Covering boxing, it'll be good to have you here on future shows as well. But Seeker Boss, given the Ghanaian perspective, we did have a Russian last time round when I did the anti yard fight. I'm back up now. So let's see Ebenezer Tete if he pulls off the uh surprise that Seeker Boss is saying. Came back as they clinch just halfway through the first round. Straight. 
Steps in. He's not afraid here. It's uh, Ebenezer Tete stepping in with a jab. Good body shot there. Oh, he's tagged. Ebenezer Tete has been tagged. He's down. He's down. Ebenezer Tete is down. Body shot in the head. He's on unsteady feet. I think it's over. Another shot and it's going to be go it's going to be done. And I feel kind of bad for Tete here because he looks. <laughs> yeah, it's. This is over. He's down. He's back up. He's on an unsteady feet. His legs are all over the place. The ref might give him the count here. A minute left in the round. Nah, it's done. He pushes the ref and it's done. It's over. In one round. Seeker boss, don't leave. Let us know what you thought of that. Do you think he should have been let out, left um, left to continue? Obviously, you're pulling for um, uh, for Ebenezer Tete to pull off the surprise and his performance being great. Didn't quite turn out that way. Let me know what you thought of it because he's been knocked out in the first round. Were you expecting that? And last King of Scotland, did you bet on inside three or four or just on three or four? Because it's obviously it's ended in, in one, which is a shame. Slower. He looked slower. I li I've literally only seen 30 seconds of that fight because I, I got cut out and Dubois. Explosive as ever. Yeah, the body shot set it up, which dropped the gloves and then they come up at the top. And that was all she wrote. I'm kind of glad it ended early because Ebenezer Tete looked like he was in a world of trouble. And any clean shots following that would have could have caused some serious damage. So here we are. <laughs> it started as quick as it it, fit, it ended as quick as it started. The hardest punching heavyweight fighter from Great Britain. I mean, it's good. It's a high praise, and that be it's great. If you're hardest puncher and you're in the heavyweight division. Left hook, right hook, another left. He loves the hooks, doesn't he? He loves throwing left hook, right hook, doesn't he? There, left hook, left hook, right hook. But one to the body, one to the head. Loves it. That belt, that one was on the belt line. I don't think it was low. Bang, bang. Loves it. Absolutely loves it. Yeah, Teddy was just. Bang, 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 one high on the head as he gets dropped down. It's the one that high in the head which drops him. Feet were all over the place when he got up. It was good stoppage. I don't get, I'm not, it's good stoppage for him. Yeah, yeah. Pushes the ref. I mean, look at his eyes there. He's just like, yeah. And that was it. He didn't unfortunately avenge his the defeat of his cousin. Maybe we'll get another family member stepping in the ring from the Alati Tete family. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it didn't go the way of the Ghanaian. It goes the way of the British man Daniel Dubois, who steps on forward and like, where does he go next? Where does he go next? Because Daniel Dubois, maybe is, is he fighting Joe Joyce? I don't think it's likely because, you know, Joe Joyce and Daniel Dubois are kind of under Frank Warren. So it's better to have two heavyweights in the mix than eliminating one for the sake of the other. And obviously Joe Joyce has been mandated by the EBU, the EBU um, sanctioning body to fight, to fight Marco Hook. My my notes here is autocorrected Marco Hook to Marco Suck. So autocorrect doesn't rate Marco Hook either. Uh, but Marco Hook, not Marco Suck. <laughs> um, does, yeah. They're both on different paths, of course. And they're both with Warren. So, I mean, it makes for an interesting 2020. And again, that's one of those phrases that I hate hearing because interesting 2020, I want an interesting 20, 2019. Um, obviously it's been setting up for the next year which I mean it's going to be good in boxing but I just want to see the fights happen and not being told about the next year it's kind of frustrating but anyway Seeker Boss I was not expecting a knockout but I believe Dubois is a good boxer fighting Dubois is a hell Ebenezer needs a lot to do before he steps in that fight but all the same he has to work hard and come 
uh, I don't know if you if you had an extra. There's, there's no interview here, which is annoying. It's cut out. But um, yeah, I think maybe you're writing a bit more. But I mean, it's good to have you here, Seeker Boss. Subscribe if you if you if you are new here. Good to have you in later fights, especially if there's other like Africans or Ghanaians in here, and you can give a Ghanaian perspective. But great to have you here. Uh, unfortunately, obviously, it didn't work out your way. And it couldn't have gone on longer, so we could have seen a little bit more of Ebenezer Tete. But I feel like we did see about as much of Tete as we were going to see because Dubois is just, you know, levels. And hashtag every belt. He's now got the Commonwealth belt to add to his collection as well as it's the WBO International on his way to getting that WBO belt. I suppose uh, it needs to work a little bit on his PR um, being a bit more of that personality. But he's getting better and getting a lot better is Daniel Dubois. Very likeable fella. He's got a great smile on him as well. And he can back it up in the ring, can't he? Absolutely smashing it in the ring, isn't he? What a, what a fighter. On his way up to the top. And it's good. It's good. There's a lot of prospects at British British level at the moment, of British prospects in general, coming through. It's good to see, especially in the heavyweight division where it's kind of at now. And it's good to see Daniel Dubois in there. Good to see Joe Joyce in there. Good to see people like, obviously he's not a prospect. Chisora is still around there. Um, so yeah, like where does where does, where does it go from here? Like, you know what I mean? Um, does he take a remains to burn? Kind of like that gatekeeper kind of level to say, hey, you know, if you're here, you got to beat the likes of remains to burn. I think that could be a fight that's next. Does he take the one that uh, Brian Jennings, like Joe Joyce did? Or does he take like David Price, which would be a great British fight. Dubois wants it. Price, I think, would probably want it. It's a big fight. Is it pay-per-view? I don't know. But it's a big fight. And it could be next on the horizon for him. And that could be, again, instead of having the brains to burn, although Stavone would probably be easier, having a David Price, both British, on British soil, selling out like an O2 arena or something like that. It could be the next fight for him in line, which would be a really good fight for him, I think. But hey, where does he go from here? But good, good to know. If he does fight again at the end, towards the end of this year, maybe not. Might be a little bit too early. Maybe he needs that break. Enjoy the last bit of his uh, end, the end of the year, and then come on strong in 2020. But he's still only young. He's still like early 20s. This is now is his 17th fight. Maybe we need to slow our roll a little bit with Daniel Dubois as well, and like let him get the experience. Let him get experience as well against these gatekeeper types, and then he can go on to fight the fighters that you know. With the belts and such, because you, the the worst thing you want to do is like rush a prospect, isn't it? You know what I mean. So it would be great to hear what Frank Warren's saying. If anyone is hearing what Frank Warren's saying, wants to, want to let me know, then please do. But I'm just going to quickly check out Twitter and see what people are saying on the Twitter sphere as to Daniel Dubois and his performance here. Let's have a quick look. on the Twitter end of things. Whilst Twitter is loading. We're gonna slowly recap and then we'll end the night as we're coming towards 11. But I see there's, there's around 10 of you guys in here. It's great to have you guys here as always. If you want to pop anything to the chat, any questions or anything, let me know. Uh, it's just a shame we can't get this interview. Uh, he's got the that Commonwealth belt around him. Um, getting interviewed as, we clo as he closed out the show, the Royal Albert Hall. Absolutely fantastic venue to have a fight in. Obviously, obviously the greats have fought in this venue as well, haven't they? So Steve Williams from the Boxing Asylum saying, when he said Tete was bad, I didn't think he meant quite this bad. <laughs> um, yeah. He looked like an anorexic Matt Skelton. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tete he had a very soft face, didn't he? Um, I'm glad the stoppage happened when it did because I don't want to see someone get hurt. And he was hurt and it could have been a lot worse. A lot of people hating the undercard as well, saying it wasn't very good or the whole card in general. Archie Sharp fight was good. This fight was decent as well. And it's free. You know what I mean? But I mean, fair. If it wasn't your cup of tea, that's fair enough. That's about it, really. We just see 
Daniel Dubois training as well in terms of reaction to that fight. So yeah, let's just recap and then let's just recap and then I'll be out there. Last King of Scotland saying catch you next time, Ames. Thanks for the stream. Last King of Scotland, thank you so much. Look out for the video coming next week. I'll probably be here tomorrow for Errol Spence versus Sean Porter. So if you're up, Last King of Scotland, it'll be great to have you here because I think that it's going to be a low crowd. So it might just be me and you, Last King of Scotland. So uh, just have a look out. If you haven't followed me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter and then we can talk in the DMs and stuff and I can let you know what's going on. But yeah, probably be streaming tomorrow for Spence versus Porter. Let's just slowly look, roll this out. Obviously, Nickel Adams versus Selena ended in a split decision draw. I thought Nickel Adams won that fight, took it, but it was close. And yeah, we'll see if she continues. I wanted her to continue. I think she's a good fighter, but I mean, maybe she didn't show up in this performance, but she can come back stronger, maybe get that unification fight and go from there. Archie Sharp was Declan Geraghty. Great fight. Declan Geraghty was causing Sharp problems, but I think Sharp knew that he just walked through him and he just took that time. Fourth round, brilliant left hook. He saw it coming from a mile away. He had that time to take it and he took it. Absolutely detonated on Declan Geraghty and just put him to sleep. Declan Geraghty was on the floor. Thankfully, he made it up to his feet. And we got to see that before the end of the fight. Archie Sharp moves on forward and could be on for big fights. Maybe even a title fight coming towards the end of the year or next year. And then Dubois versus Tete. Not a lot known about Tete beforehand. And I mean, still not a lot a lot known about Tete after the fight. But Dubois taking out the opponent that's in front of him in devastating fashion. He just clocked him with head head and body shots on the belt line with the body shots, but he set it up. I think they were above belt. They weren't, though. Set up to the head and had Tete on wobbly legs. And he finished the, and the fight, ended up getting waved off. The referee didn't see that Tete was fit to continue. I, I agree. I think he was, uh, you know, on wobbly legs. And you don't want to see anyone get hurt, especially with someone like Daniel Dubois in the ring against you where you can get hurt. So good stoppage. We had, and that was it. And we had you guys in the chat as well. Toby's third attempt, great stream as per Ames, interesting and funny. Thank you so much for your guys' support, Toby, especially commenting on every every video, and you, Roz, as well, if you're still here, and Coco. Great to have you guys here. I'll see you on the next one as well. Last King of Scotland was here as well. Thanks so much. Seeker Boss of Ghanaian, giving us a Ghanaian um, perspective. Seeker, if you're new here and you're still here, smash that subscribe button. Great to have you here on future videos. Mr. E was in here as well, talking a bit about Nigel Ben. As was Hybrid, another new guy here. Great to have you here, Hybrid. Me and Hybrid are on the same sort of age level as well. And Rival Boxing Talk and News, brilliant to have you here as well. As was a few others. A Boxing Blunt, shout out to you. Boy Better No, shout out to you. G Lung, shout out. Vegan on Extreme, Nathan, shout out to you as well. Leo Reaper, Jack in the chat, great to see you. GB Boxing, great to see you as well. Tommy Temper as well, one of the first in the chat. Great to have you here as well. So as we're closing out, just to let you know, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter as to update some of my videos. Smash the like button if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share it as well if you can. It would be great, uh, great support to the channel if you can share it as well on any platform that you got. Show it to a friend. I'm covering the big fights. I'll probably be live reacting to Spence for support. So if you're here uh, tomorrow, please join me as well. It's probably going to be a low one because it's like 5 a.m., isn't it? But yeah, most likely be here covering the Contender series we watched back in the day. If you haven't seen it, great chance for you to see it. I throw in jokes and memes, covering things that boxing fans say, throwing some jokes and memes there. And as well, I've got a video coming up this weekend. Uh, sorry, this week coming, gonna make you laugh. It's come across something ridiculous and hilarious in the form of in the world of boxing. You're gonna love it. And I'll be doing a series on things that I haven't seen as well. And you guys have suggested a couple of fights. If you have any more suggestions, let me know. But for now, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure to have you guys here in the chat and this fight. Sharp versus Garrity was a fight of the night. It was all right overall. Uh, not one of the best, but hey, I've, I've seen worse as well. But thank you guys for joining me. I'm forever your cornerman take games, and I'll see you on the next fight night. Thank you, guys.